Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and today we are going to fly the Turkish Boeing 737-900ER from Istanbul over to Antalya and back, which is a flight that is operating daily in the real world. So, let's head right into our Boeing 737 and this is our ride for the day, the Turkish 737-900. Pretty modern equipped, however, there are a couple things that it doesn't have, like heads-up display, but hey, let's take it right from here. So, first thing, I'm quickly going to start powering the airplane up because it is pretty cold today in Turkey. It's actually snowing outside at a temperature of plus two degrees. Oh, let's run that fire test, make sure that everything is working, and then we'll take the APU up straight away in order to warm up our airplane. Not exactly the kind of weather I'm used to from Turkey, but you can't have it all, I guess. So, let's have a look at the flight plan for today, then. We are flying this on Vatsim, however, in... Istanbul, there is currently no air traffic control online, but in Antalya, they actually have an event with a training day today. So they are training new, new air traffic controllers over there, and we will go there and help them training their new people. So, let's have a look into the flight plan of the day. And this is going to be it. We'll be the Turkish One Quebec Romeo from Istanbul towards Antalya. And looking down into the weather forecast, that's probably going to be most important. We can see over in Istanbul we have light snow showers at the moment. And we actually have some blowing snow forecast throughout the day and throughout the night. Antalya looks a little bit better, but it's freezing cold at only 6 degrees. However, good weather forecasts definitely pointing towards the runway. 6 today. So, it is a training day over in it is a training day over in um, Antalya, so we are going to take a little bit of extra fuel for a go around just in case something happens. So let's say we are going to take 600 kilos extra that's going to cover an extra round, making a total fuel of then 6 tons. And First of all, hello to everybody in the chat, and I see we have quite a couple of uh, Turkish fans over here today. Um, Lukas, can you put a donation link for the earthquake victims in the description? Sorry if it's too political. Um, I really feel it for those people, but, you know, um, there is a good reason why they say on Vatsim it is not allowed to simulate catastrophes, so um, I personally rather like to um, keep it that way and not deal with current political or current humanitarian happenings on the channel. Hope that is understandable. Nonetheless, um, let's take it right into the flight. So, we said we need six tons of fuel and for the passengers we actually have a full load today. So let's go ahead and request our fuel truck and let's also set up the passengers. We're going to carry 168 today and we'll have a thousand kilos of cargo in the front hold, 500 kilos of cargo in the aft hold and that is going to be it. Okay, then let's finish up the safety inspection. We'll set the park and brake here just in case. Definitely don't need the transponder on yet, and then... Voice recorder on. Check the clackers, check the flight recorders. And here we go. Okay, APU is available, let's start the timer. And then we can already start the pre-flight and the safety procedures. OK, 
Okay, fuel truck is here. We said we need six tons. You can please start the refueling. Okay then. Light test. This time I'm not gonna forget it. So I'm intentionally skipping over the pack lights over here, which are not working. Um, that's something that PMDG still has to fix. I don't know why that didn't make it into the 900 release, but it's currently on both the 700, uh, sorry, the 800 and the 900. So I hope they are going to do something about that very soon. But we'll have to see. Until then, we have to wait and uh, have to deal with those lights not working. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the programming of the flight management computer. Well, first of all, the APU is running for two minutes now, so let's get the air conditioning going. That is probably the most needed here. Okay then, now that we've got air conditioning, you guys can start boarding and you can start loading the cargo as well. Let's have a look into the FMC. We're sitting in a 900ER, 27k engines, current NAV data, ops program 62, and we are in Lima Tango Fox Mike. So, request the flight plan towards Antalya, please. And we'll be the Turkish one Quebec Romeo. Okay, wait a few moments till the flight plan uplink arrives. That should be there any moment. And load that up. Okay, root loading, and here it is. Okay, departure runway. I actually have no idea how the runway system in Istanbul works. So, here's what I typically do if I don't know how something works in real life. I open up my good friend Flightradar24 and just check what they are doing there. So, why don't we just about go ahead and do the same? So, flight radar, remove my 737 filter, of course, and then let's have a look at Istanbul. We have any departures here? Yeah, we've got one. Okay. Departing from the leftmost runway, which is 3 4 left. And for the taxi routing, it looks like they're going over the taxiway there. And then southbound and all around it. Okay, we'll remember that because that is the taxi routing that we will be using as well then in a few moments, provided no air traffic control comes online. Okay. So let's do just that then. Runway is going to be 3 4 left for the departure. So, runway 3 4 left, and we have the Rutwu departure, which then got to be Rutwu for Charlie. Okay, for the arrival in Antalya, let's take runway 3 6 left for the moment, provided I can find it. Actually, I can't because it's only runway 1 8 center. So let's take, uh, sorry, runway 3 6 center. I suppose we take runway 3 6 center for now. And we have the Babsa 1 Alpha arrival. And that looks good to me for now. Activate that. Then for the performance, we have cost index of 26, reserve fuel 2.5, estimated zero fuel weight 60.7, flight level 350. Cruise winds 296 at 20. 
And for the transition level, let's actually get out the Navigraph charts and have a look over here. So, import the flight, please. Istanbul towards Antalya, thank you very much. And let's just change that runway. So, we, take, we said we are going to take 3 4 left for this one, and then Rapu. What is it? For Charlie, add that to the route, please. Thank you very much. Synchronize, and there we got it. So, transition altitude 12,000. This is 12,001. And finally, eyesight deviation plus 4, so minus 50 degrees at cruise level. Okay. Temperature plus 2, and for the emergencies, let's see if we've got anything here. Once again, the website from Blackbox711 is a really good one for engine out information. And here we've got something. So, runway 3, 4, left. Straight ahead, 25 miles to hold. Okay, we can do that. So, that's the preliminary FMC preparation pretty much completed. Let's go ahead and check the rest of the flight deck before we actually start our flight. So, let's see, we've got six tons of fuel on board, that means we can switch on the seatbelt sign, as our refueling is completed. Battle 350, Antalya is at 200 feet if I'm not mistaken. We're at the home base, so it's going to be the right igniter. Flight rack is on. Okay, let's pull up the um, charts once more. So, what do we have? Any initial climb published? Yes, 4,000 feet. Okay. That's 4,100 pre-selected. Okay, it's going to be pretty much an immediate left turn, but for the Romba heading, let's look at the ground chart. 3, 4 left. 3, 5, 4 degrees. Three five four and three five four. Okay, we have already mostly done the um, EFIS setup. The only thing here, elevation three two five, so that means we can use an MFRA of one one three five. Uh, sorry, one one three two five. That way around, thousand feet above the airfield elevation. That is normally the minimum flap retraction altitude. Takes a little while, but we will be there in a second. Here we are. Okay then, weather information, let's see. Current Matar says 7,000 meters visibility, 2,200 towards the south in light snow showers. Temperature 2, altimeter 1034. Okay, and 1034 is set. Very good. Then let's continue the setup. And that should be mostly it. Seeing that we don't have ATC online, we are going to stay on Unicom for the departure. So 122.8, but I'm not going to set that active quite yet because otherwise we'll hear everybody talking and we only need that really when we start moving. So, I'm just going to deselect the ILS frequencies here so that we don't get the um, primary flight display cluttered up and that should mostly be it then. Okay. Apart from that, 
let's get the armrests out. Oh, very nice! An approach controller just came online, so we'll have ATC for the departure. That is superb. I know my Turkish friends would be uh, up for that. <laughs> no, seriously, they are really good here in Batum, Turkey. They're doing a really good job. Okay, so... We are pretty much ready for our departure briefing then. Threats for the departure. It's going to be quite a complicated taxi, so we'll just take things slow, and if we're unsure about where to go, then we'll just about um, then we'll just about stop the airplane and, if applicable, talk to air traffic control. And that should be it for the threats. Then a route check. Lima Tango Fox Mike, Lima Tango Alpha India, Tango Hotel Yankee 1 Quebec Romeo. Routing via Ratwu, Uniform from Tango 35 Bepsa, and that's going to be it already for Romeo 36 Center. Ground distance 338 versus a planned distance from the operational flight plan of 341. UTC time 1225, altimeter 1034, reading 330 feet, MFRA 1325. Flight directors are on and the standby instruments set. Left seat takeoff, Romeo 34 left, flaps 5, noise abatement 2, and we have an um, engine outset that takes us straight out to 25 miles, climbing 3,000 feet, that's going to keep us safe over the water. Emergencies, if the core before we run is stop, I'll simultaneously close the thrust levers, disconnect the auto throttle, apply max manual braking or verify operation of the RTO auto brakes. I'll manually raise the speed brake lever, apply max reverse thrust, and when the aircraft comes to a stop, set the parking brake. Now, if you call stop, I will note the brakes on speed, call speed brakes up or speed brakes not up, and thrust reverse normal or abnormal indications. I'll call 100 knots, 80 knots, 60 knots, and the runway distance remaining. Verify your actions, call any emissions, I call auto brake disarm, and select flaps 40 when the parking brake has been set and advise ATC of the reject. We then identify the failure and carry out any drills as appropriate. If we decide to evacuate, we reach and do the evacuation checklist. Time permitting, we'll pull the CVR circuit breaker, you grab the lid, and then we get out. So, taxi as uh, briefed earlier already is going to be a pushback somewhere into the uh, parking bay over here. Let's quickly have a look at that chart once again. And then taxi is going to take us via November, Charlie, or actually via Delta. November, Delta, Bravo, all the way around, and then somewhere over here via one of those Alpha taxiways to the runway 34 left. So, not quite easy, but then again, um, it is it is not too hard either. So, then let's have a look at the departure. Ratwu for Charlie departure. And if we look into the description down here, it is simply an Arnav description for the departure. So let's actually check it upstairs. So, FMC, runway 3 for left, Ratwu for Charlie. And from the departure end of runway, we make a left hand turn towards Fox Mike 017, maximum 240 knots, above 2,000 feet. Then 264, 5.7 miles, Fox Mike 018, left 174, 7.8 miles, Fox Mike 019, left 125, 11.4 towards Elnuk, 118, 5.9 inbound Mekok, same track, 5.9 inbound Filfu, and then a right turn, 180, 8.7, Fox Mike 043, 171, 19.4 towards Rachi. And then left, 141, 20, 6.2, Fox Mike 045, right turn, 154, 17.8 towards Ratvu. Climbing initially altitude 4000 feet, and we can put that in the FMC over here. Okay, finally look at the takeoff page. We said we're going to do noise abatement procedure number two. So acceleration height becomes a thousand feet, runway condition wet, and that should be it. Do you have any questions about the departure briefing? Probably not, I hope. So let's go ahead and contact ATC for our departure clearance. So ATIS 12885. Parallel departures in progress. Caution bird activity. Departure frequency 132.05.
Caution departing traffic runway 1836 hold short of CAT 02 and CAT 03 holding, wind 030 degree, 18 knots. Visibility 08, to the south 3000 meters. Light snow showers. Clouds scattered 1000 feet, broken 2200 feet. Temperature plus 2, dew point plus 1. QNH 1034, end of departure eight is information, Alpha. Okay, so we have the information alpha. Let's call for clearance. A ground controller just came online as well. That is super. And of course, one second, we'll be there in a moment. Istanbul ground, good evening, Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo, information alpha, request clearance to Antalya. I think this gentleman has not set himself up yet. Let's give it a second, I'm going to write him a quick message to ask him. controller just uh, came online so I bet he is probably just in the process of um, setting this up ah he can't hear people Istanbul ground Turkish one Quebec Romeo radio check on one two four this means seven two five Turkish okay, 1 Quebec Romeo information alpha ready to copy clearance to Antalya. Okay, he's working on it. No problem. I'm happy they came online actually here in Istanbul because the event we have is in um, Antalya today, the training event. So in the meantime, we are just going to sit here and wait while he gets his um, audio set up right. Actually, we can already start preparing the aircraft for the pushback because we'll be ready very soon. So the tuck can go. Passengers are on board. We still need to load the aft hold. So let's go ahead and do that. And we are operating on the APU already, so the ground power can be disconnected. Ground, my check. 5 by 5 Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo. Okay, in the meantime... They should be ready with the loading in a few moments. Let's get GSX to prepare for the pushback already. Now oh, we don't need the ice. The Turkish livery really fits the airplane, doesn't it? It looks really good on the, on the 737-900. I like it. 
in the meantime, a few of you guys are asking in the chats if if you um, should consider the 900 over the 800 if you have that already. Now, in my opinion, the 900 is really a different aircraft from the 800. Of course, it has a lot of similarities, that's out of question, but for example, the auxiliary tanks or the different flight dynamics, for example, it slows down a lot better on approach than the 800 does. Um, you know, it just makes the airplane a different beast to fly. And would I then recommend it? Yes, absolutely. Now, it also comes at a very good price of uh, $49.99 US dollars. So that's definitely something to keep in mind as well. Five by five. Okay, they are ready with the loading. Number ground, Turkish one Quebec Romeo, radio check. Turkish one Quebec Romeo, I can hear you now. It was the bug with audio for that. I'm very sorry. Perfect, no problem at all. We have information Alpha ready to copy clearance to Antalya. Turkish one. You're cutting out again, just after the Turkish one came back. Um, is your push to talk here signed correctly? Okay, so let's do the um, performance. We have 61.5, which is quite a bit more than the estimated zero fuel weight. So let's quickly go ahead and look into the flight plan to check how much extra fuel that is going to use. So, SIM toolkit, and then we have the operational impact up here. Weight change, one ton more, plus 29 kilos. Okay, that's no problem. We uplifted like 70 kilos more, so not going to be a problem. Makes it 67.6. Then we'll make this a 24k takeoff without any without any um, assumed temperature, flaps 5, trim 5 units. That, and we have wet speed, but it's a skid resistant runway here in Istanbul. This is 140, 144, And all stations, let's try this again, it's double ground to 5 by 5 Final. Now we only gotta hope that you don't cut out again after talking. Uh, Turkish one Quebec Romeo, let's try the clearance again. Information has us on board. Turkish one Quebec Romeo, thanks. Uh, do you require the ice Turkish one Quebec Romeo, negative. One Quebec Romeo, thanks. Set destination, that before echo departure, let me 36, initial climb 5000 feet, work 6422. Turkish one Quebec Romeo is clear destination, that before echo departure, runway 36, work 6422. Turkish one Quebec Romeo, uh, yeah, just confirm initial climb 8000. Initial climb 8000, Turkish one Quebec Romeo. Turkish one Quebec, Quebec Romeo, Rita, correct. Okay, so 8000, different departure than planned, but okay. So then we have runway 36 and Ratvu for echo departure. Take off speeds deleted. Let's look into that again. 136, 142, 153, that looks good. Turkish 183 it is. Then squad 6. Victor, thanks, get destination. Arrasso for echo departure, I made 36. Okay, that looks good so far. Then all we just gotta do is uh, to rebrief that sit. So let's go ahead and do that. Navigraph, departure. That is what I'm looking for. And we have departure on May 36. Where is it? Down here. At the route. And then the departure is going to become the Radbu for Echo at that to route as well, please. Good evening, Turkish 1070 on both. And here we are. Okay, so. Turkish Let's uh, quickly brief that again before we go. And we have the Rat Roof for Echo, runway 36. Transition altitude 12,000 versus 12,001. Golf, and golf, for uh, the routing, we go to the departure uh, end of runway, then a right turn um, to 024, in my Fox Mike 032, max 240 knots, uh, above 2200 feet. Right turn 084, 5.5 miles, towards Fox Mike 033, right 174, 7.8, Fox Mike 034, 
And we can put the stop climb of 8000 in here already. Station code in second. Then, um, 179, 14.1, Imato Filthu, 188.7, Fox Mike 043, 171.19.4, and thereafter it's as we had it previously as well. Okay, that looks all good to me, and the trim now is 4.5 units. So oh, that should be the rebriefing completed. Let's quickly see if we can find a good taxi chart here as well. So we need this one. Six, Taxi route, four, runway. Nine. Where is it? Taxi route, departure, runway 36. That should be it. So now we know what kind of taxi to expect here. Okay, perfect. That should make our life easy. And let's do the safety inspection checklist and before start checklist down to the line. Services and trucks checked, maintenance status checked, battery on, electric hydraulic pumps on, landing gear lever down, ship's library checked, IRS mode selectors, nav, gear pins, 1, 2, 3 removed, light test checked, oxygen tested 100%, yaw damper on, nav transfer display switches, normal auto, fuel, it's 5-4 uh, required and we have 6 on board, 4 pumps on. Cabin utility, IV galley power on, emergency exit lights on, flash no on, window heat on, air condition and pressurization, packs auto, bleeds on, set, pressurization mode selector auto, instruments, trust check, auto brakes, RTO, hydraulics, normal, speed brake, down detent, parking brake, set, stop and cutout switches, normal, wheel by fire warning, check, radius, radar and transponder, set, standby, rod on aileron trims, 3 and 0, take a briefing discussed, PA, well, we can quickly say hello to our passengers, can we? Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening from the cockpit. This is your captain speaking. My name is Emanuel, and in the name of Turkish Airlines, you're very warm welcome aboard our flight to Antalya. Flight time today is about 55 minutes. We expect a smooth flight at 35,000 feet. We would like to thank you very much for being with us. Sit back, relax, enjoy the flight, and if there is anything we can do for you to make it more comfortable, please don't hesitate to ask any of our cabin crew. The cabin crew will shortly point out the safety features of this Boeing 737-900 aircraft. We would like to ask you for your full attention, as that is not just for your own safety, but also for the safety of the passengers sitting around you. Once again, you are very warm welcome aboard this Turkish Airlines flight. Okay, PA complete, FMC CDU set, and my IS box, automatic. Um, hold on a moment, this is wrong. So the weight is unchanged, we said we use 24k, and then 40, 44, 52, do you require the today? and NADP 2. Okay, so, set, trim, 5 units set, performance with balance, sign send, phones off, UFB, airplane mode stowed, flight equipment is cockpit door locked, doors to go. And let's close the doors and then we go. Turkish one, Quebec Romeo, stand echo for request push back and start up. Turkish one, Quebec Romeo, push and start proof, face east, QNH 1034, squad more Charlie. Push and start proof, face east, QNH 1034, and you should be receiving mail Charlie already, Turkish one, Quebec Romeo. Yeah, I just put it now, thanks. Okay, before Star Trek's below the line, air compacts off, anti collision height on, parking brake set, jump on the off, before Star Trek is complete. And continue pushback, and no de icing. Okay, and that's all right. Turkish 2, Papa November, Istanbul Grand Hello, Clit, München, Baden, for Echo, for Delta departure, number 3, 5 left, initial climb 5000 feet, stock 6431. So, why is DSX not ready after all this time waiting? Ah, because they first have to slam us into the ground again. Okay. There is a change in your clearance to clear to destination Varden for echo departure. Interesting, it started to push with the trucks in place. GSX. No further comment.
Bagi coba menonton dari Pakrek. Okay, I believe the pushback is a little bit longer over here. So we're just gonna wait until we know where we are going before we start the engine startup. Okay, I think I know where we are pushing, so let's start engine number two. And two. By the way, if you're wondering, since it is currently so cold outside, just about a week ago I had a case in the real airplane where the start valve was actually frozen in the um, closed position. And uh, it took quite a while before that actually. Um, for us? No. So yeah, I've had that case um, where the start valve was just stuck in the closed position and um, it took a little while. After all, after about 30 seconds of the starter being engaged, it finally got freed and then the engine start commenced. That was interesting, but that's the kind of stuff you face on real aircraft sometimes when you're operating in cold weather conditions. But to be fair, it was minus 7 degrees outside and not plus 2 like it is right now. Okay, start a cutout, monitor 2, stable. Then, it's quite cold, let's get the air conditioning going. Isolated pack operation, start engine number 1. Okay, and two, all press, and one, 25%, fuel on, make sure the valves are actually operating correctly, but here we go. Start a cutout, monitor one. One is. Come on, red line. Number one is stable. That little red line indicates that the start sequence is complete in the EECs as well, so you should wait until that's um, completed. Okay, so looking outside, it has actually stopped snowing, so we can extend the flaps already. Pull up, pull down, pull left, pull right, rudders left, rudder right, before taxi checklist. Generators on, APU off, start switch is auto, propeed on, anti ice on, air conditioning, packs auto bleeds on, isolation valve auto, flaps, five required, five selected, and a green light, step trim, five units required, and set. Start leave with idly turned, flight controls checked, recall checked, before taxi check is complete. Turkish 1, Quebec, Romeo, request taxi. Turkish 1, Quebec Romeo, Taxi Tango 7, hold Tango Delta. Taxi Tango 7, hold Tango Delta, Turkish 1, Quebec Romeo. Turkish 5, 9, 1, push and start the proof face north, finish 1, 0, 3, 4, squad mode Charlie. Okay, that is initially to the right hand side and then hold short of the first taxiway. Lights on, clear left, clear right, brakes off, config, checked, let's go. So for those of you wondering, this is the parking, uh, this is the taxi route, Tango 7 onto here and then hold short in front of Tango Delta over there. Taxi right, Tango 7, hold beam, stand Delta 1, 2. 
Oh yeah, waiting for that Anadolu jet over there. Okay, he's going. Then it should hopefully be our turn after him. Two pops on November 10th, taxi November, Echo Golf, Golf 8 Alpha, hold 3 sec. Okay, let's stop here. That is our clearance limit for now. One, the traffic, the company behind you is overshot a bit. Can you still proceed with the push? Uh, we can wait one, that would be perfect. Pushback turns cancelled. Uh, okay, that's got to be this guy over there, there whose push has been cancelled. So this guy. So this guy is now going, and we are probably just going to follow him. Let's get that taxi chart out. That is going to be a little bit. Turkish one, Quebec, Romeo, follow the company in front. It's going to be a 737 800 to Golf 8 Alpha, Romeo 36. Turkish one, Quebec, Romeo, follow the 737 in front to Golf 8 Alpha, Romeo 36. Okay, that's the very easy way of taxiing. So let's hope that he knows where he's going. But. He's surely a local. I'm sure he does. And clear left and clear right. Off we go. Oh, that is nice. Did you just see how he stopped when he did not know where he uh, needed to go? Because originally he should have gone first right here on November Echo, that is what ATC just said. But then he asked um, where he should go and confirmed with ATC, but he stopped the airplane in the meantime. That is, that is something we don't see happening very often on Vatsim and something that I really appreciate him doing. Very good job there of that pilot. Because that is exactly what you should do. Isn't that a huge terminal over here? The first time I saw the new Istanbul airport, I was really like, wow, this is a big airport. Okay, let's see. He went the third to the right. We follow him on that. The left is clear. The right is clear.
So let's see, ATC gave us holding point Golf 8 Alpha. Let's have a quick look into the chart to see where that is. And Golf 8 Alpha is the first it seems. So we're just passing that okay, first holding point, point here, so we take the first of those three Roma intersections there. Turkish one Quebec Romeo, same with you, contact issue, okay, one three two is zero five zero five. One three two is zero five zero Turkish one Quebec Romeo, bye bye. Hello, Turkish one eight picture Romeo, uh go eight alpha. Turkish one eight picture, hello we see Kai via golf eight alpha. How many three six zero four zero two two not clear for takeoff? Yo, call approach. Good evening, Turkish one Quebec Romeo, ready in sequence. Trying Quebec Romeo, hello, Yeshil Continue, hold short, Golf 8 Alpha. Hold short, Golf 8 Alpha for Turkish one Quebec Romeo. Okay, before takeoff checks to the line. Contact, check, flaps, 5 green light, stop trim, 5 units, set, takeoff briefing. Left seat takeoff, runway 36, flaps 5, noise abatement procedure number 2, and we have. Wet but skid resistant takeoff speeds 140, 144, 152 set. And the departure takes us straight ahead with the right turn. We are on the departure frequency already. In case of any emergency, we proceed straight ahead 25 miles. That is going to be over the water, so 3000 feet is going to keep us safe. Any questions on the briefing? No? Okay, then cabin secure before takeoff check is complete. Okay, he is going. Looks like a little bit of wind here if we have a look at that wind sock. Confirm Turkish one Capic Romeo by Golf Eight Alpha Line of Armet Trisex. Okay, he said four Quebec Romeo, that's why I just asked him, because such a busy place, I wouldn't be surprised if there was another Turkish with a similar identified. Level okay, before takeoff check is below the line. MCP, Level set, two, transponder, five, 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 TARA, strobe lights on, landing lights off. Actually, no landing light yet. Clear left, clear right. Take a run, Quebec Romeo, runway 36, clear for takeoff. Okay, landing lights on before takeoff check is complete. Timing. Stabilized, set to take off thrust. And this is probably the door light once again, yeah. It's already. Take off set indications normal. It did not. Checked. Turkish one Quebec Romeo passing 1600 feet. One Quebec Romeo, you should try land to fight, continue climb to level 250. I'm unrestricted level 250, Turkish one Quebec Romeo. Flaps one and flaps up. Set, 250 checked, and he said unrestricted, so we everything. But we'll keep the speed restriction for now. 
There, but here we go. Okay, flaps up no lights. Set standard. Passing 30, climbing 250 after takeoff checklist. And we can switch the NTIs off for now. So air condition and pressurization 2.0 climbing. Set. Altimeters. Standard. Okay, so twice. Passing 40, climbing 250. After takeoff check is complete, and we can release the cabin crew. And of course, the moment you release them, it starts getting turbulent, as you can see on the speed indicator there. But well, that happens. Oh, 250 knots, that's what we need. I am closing shortly, you need to come down to the plate, bye-bye. Okay, let's start that right turn a little bit earlier, then we can avoid the turbulence from that cloud. And turn the gas on. Hi, Tony. Okay, Schwan, Quebec, Romeo, proceed direct to Radfu. Okay, Schwan, Quebec, Romeo, proceed direct to Radfu. Okay, that's Radfu. Execute. Well enough available. Enough. Altimeters. Passing 101, climbing 250, 10 tracks. But we'll fly the acceleration first, then we do the 10 tracks. Want you to dismulate Turkish Von Kevich Romeo. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. You too. Bye bye. Okay. This is, by the way, usually the point where I engage the autopilot in real life as well. So, about after the acceleration in flight level 100. Come on, A. Now we can do the Tentrex and the engine and TAs can go off again. So, fuel is pretty much balanced and we've got four pumps on. Lights off, APU off, air condition and pressurization 5.0, climbing. What's the temperature's doing? 26, very nice. Set. anti ice off. So, still a little bit turbulent, we'll keep the passengers seated for now. Recall checked and 1 to 1.5 monitoring. Can checks completed. Okay, very nice departure here out of Istanbul. And once again, thank you to the air traffic controllers. It's so nice um, how they welcome you here in Turkey. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually only came online for our departure because they saw the live stream. So the guys at um, Bats and Turkey are really good guys. Really friendly people. Oh, a little wind shift over here, but we'll, we'll hopefully be out of it very soon. 
I'll take 30 seconds, then I will be straight back, guys. Okay, I'm straight back. So, sorry for that little interruption. I just had to uh, find the charger for my headset. Um, Philip is asking in the comments, in real life, do you have to enter the um, values on the second takeoff page, like runway remaining, runway wind, and runway slope? Uh, we don't do that. Um, we basically calculate the departure values using the um, Boeing OPT, and then we don't have to do any of those entries. And Ufran, hello there. Are you the um, Istanbul ground controller? If so, then very nice to finally have talked to you. We wanted to do that for a while, didn't we? And Stefan, good evening as well. Yeah, indeed, nice to see the 900 in action. You know, today I saw that they were doing this event at... Um, Antalya Airport with the Antalya training night where they have a couple of new air traffic controllers staffing up the airport and I thought like hey we've got to fly there and uh, use the possibility number one because I always like to help out new controllers on Batson but number two of course because um, Turkish Airlines is one of the few 737-900 operators in the European theater so I definitely had to um, use the opportunity to fly the uh, Turkish aircraft over there as well. And Will, am I using DLSS? Um, yes, I am. And the Apple Pilot, hi, I'm in the aircraft in front of you. Very nice. Good job on the taxi, my friend. And armed up 07, when ATC gives you a new star, how do you find what transition to use on Batsim? Well, if you can't figure anything out, just ask him. That's probably the easiest option usually, just, uh, just talk to ATC and ask them. So, we can for now continue our climb to flight level 350, which is the optimum cruise level as calculated by Simbrief. And... If we have a very quick look into the flight plan, then we are probably not going to go any higher than that because we don't need to. But also because the 900 is usually a little bit too heavy to actually do that. So let's have a look over here into the plan. And as we can see, plan flight level 350. And according to Simbrief, that is the planned optimum flight level. Now, when Simbrief adds something like this, dispatch remark, planned optimum flight level, it usually means that it has calculated the data for a higher level as well, and it would be less fuel efficient. So, if we look down here into the operational impact section, then indeed we can see if we go 2,000 feet higher to flight level 370, we're going to use 25 kilogram more of fuel. And it says time plus zero, that means it would probably take a couple of seconds longer as well. Just like 2,000 feet below, plus three kilos, plus one minute flight time. So flight level 350 is actually the most optimal flight level we can get for our flight. Of course, seeing that we fly 900, even though it is just such a short flight of about one hour flight time, if we have a look into the FMC over here, we can see that at the weight that we currently are, which is roughly 67 tons. The optimum flight level is even below flight level 370. And as you can see, gross weight 66 tons up here. That is one of the things that I meant earlier when I talked about the 737-900 being such a heavier airplane than the 800. 
see we've had a takeoff weight of approximately a 67 and a half tons on this one. In the 737-800, even if we have a full airplane with 189 passengers on a holiday flight like Palma de Mallorca or even something a little bit further like Alicante or Corfu, you would usually be under 66 tons. And Bootwin, thank you very much for the 11 euro donation. Thank you for all your very good tutorials and streams. I've learned a lot about flying the 737NG from you. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Bootwin. Now, I am actually going to forward the entire donation to um, the good cause for helping people after the, air the earthquake in Turkey. But uh, thank you very much for that. Will, is there a conversion course from the Dash 8 to the Dash 9 737? Um, no, there isn't. The entire 737 um, 600 to 900 basically are flown without any differences training by the pilots. There would be a little differences training for the MAX, but the type rating as it is in my license actually covers every airplane from the 300 to the 900. And then with that little differences training of the famous two and a half hours iPad course plus a four hour simulator session, actually expands my type rating to the 737 MAX as well. But there is no differences course between flying any of the 737 NG series. And then Reisefly, is the 737 MAX 8 next? Um, no, the 777 is going to be next. However, when we had Robert Randasso on the live stream yesterday, we actually talked about his release schedule and the MAX a little bit. And you can review all of that in uh, yesterday's live stream if you want to. But the important thing here to take forward is that Robert said that they are working on the Max in the background and it's probably not going to be a major public announcement before the release. So what we are going to see is the airplane is just going to pop out eventually. And to put it in the words of Robert Randasso himself, he's going to or eventually you will see me stream it and at the same moment the thing is going to be released. But he just said it is going to come at some point in the future, but not in the too far future. So the way he said it I would probably guess between the 777 and the 747, but he didn't officially confirm or deny that, so we'll have to see. So then, angle of bank 10 degrees. And Felipe, where can you find that live stream? Uh, it was yesterday, 737-900 release party. I'm going to put a link in the um, description below just after just after we landed in um, at the end of this live stream. But let me actually try to find that already. Yeah, it was yesterday's live stream. PMDG 737-900ER release party, including giveaway. That was the one. And Will, $5 donation. Learned a lot from your content. Really appreciate the detail and your passion for aviation. After arrival, do you keep a left fuel pump on, if on the APU? Uh, yes, Will, we absolutely would. Now, in my airline, it is actually standard operating procedure to keep the fuel pumps on during the entire turnaround. Only if we secure the airplane at the end of the day, we are actually going to switch the um, fuel pumps off. But if you had the APU running for whatever reason, then you would keep the uh, left forward or the left aft pump on. Now, the manuals tell you to use the left forward pump. But it sometimes just feels a little strange to have the left switch off and the right switch is off and then that one on. So a couple of people just also put the left aft pump on instead of the left forward. Both work, but by manual you would keep the left forward pump on until you shut the APU down. However, that is a leftover from the 737 Classic. In the NG, you wouldn't need to do that anymore because the fuel pumps have been reworked and the APU fuel pump itself is actually quite good in the NG. But for commonality with the classics we still do that and um, if the manual says then we are definitely going to do it. And Photochromax, 2 euros donation, a little contribution for a good cause. 
Thank you very much, Photochromax. I'm going to forward that for the good cause of helping the people who've had the earthquake in uh, Turkey. Riserfly, do you think PMDG is going to make a better Max than iFly? Now, before I answer that, just be aware that I am, of course, a little bit biased because I um, because I am on the PMDG uh, technical beta team. But I do not only think PMDG is going to make a better max than I fly. I believe PMDG is totally going to blow them out of the simulator. I mean, just have a look at the iFly 747 in P3D and compare that to the PMDG 737 in P3D, and the PMDG is just so much better. That is nothing against iFly. They do make good aircraft, but, you know, they don't make as detailed aircraft as PMDG does. Editless, do you reset the IRS before the return flight? I would only do that if you get an FMC message advising you about degraded navigation performance. So here's what you can do if you want to um, monitor your IRS performance. If you click the performance button on the ND and then go to a lower scale, you are going to see the IRS position indicated by these little white stars over here. And you know, if that's more than like two and a half miles from the airplane position, then I would probably do a quick realignment. And a quick realignment is basically done by putting the IRSs back into a line and then immediately back into NAV. Then you just enter the IRS position once again, and that's it. Okay, so we've reached our cruising level. Feels quite smooth over here, so let's actually put the seatbelt into auto, so that the people can go to the toilet. And then we are just 80 miles out from the top of descent, so it might be a good moment already to listen to the arrival aters over in Antalya and start preparing for the approach over there. Antalya is an airport that I have only once or twice flown to on Vatsim and never in real life, so we might take a little bit longer for the arrival preparation there and do it in a little bit more detail. So arrival aid is 18275. By the way, before we switch that active, I just want to show you something that I really like the um, Turkish controllers doing in Vatsim. And that is, if we go to uh, vPilot over here, you can see they've got two different ATISs online for the airport. So they've got an Antalya Alpha ATIS and an Antalya Delta ATIS. Alpha is arrival, Delta is departure. So in real life, many airports have different ATISs for arriving and departing traffic. And the guys here in Turkey do simulate that. Look down here. For Istanbul as well, we have two different ATISs online, an arrival and a departure ATIS. And the same is the case over in Antalya over here. So we need the arrival ATIS, of course, since we're arriving traffic, and that is going to be on 118.275. So, let's have a listen. And it looks like the Vatsim voice server doesn't do it. That is unfortunate. Then we've just got to get the text ages. So we'll just have a look at it once again. So, Antalya, ATIS Information Charlie, 1720 Zulu, expect ILS Victor approach, runway 36 right, transition level 160, wind 340 at 18, 6 degrees, 1026, end of arrival ATIS. Very good. Then we need QNH 1036. And to quickly answer the question that's uh, been asked in terms of the ATIS over there again, um, there is no, to my knowledge, there is no difference in the procedures of the IRS reset in the turnaround by different airlines, but I might be mistaken there. But I do not believe that that is different per airline.
Okay, the Zen forecast uplink ready. Let's get that. And then for the arrival, they set ILS Victor 36 right. So let's take that. Star should be unchanged. But let's have a look into the charts to see what we are actually going to do. Hey, okay, Antalya, approach 36 right. ILS Victor, there it is. And we can get rid of the Istanbul charts, don't need those anymore. And we do, of course, need the parking charts. Domestic terminal is up here, so that's where I expect to go at the end. Okay, cool. Then Isle of Victor 36 right, we can start setting that one up. Forces 002 and 002. Frequency is 108.1. And 1081. And then we can also use Lara VOR for the mist approach 1615. Okay, minimums 359. Elevation 150, and that's it. Okay, that looks good enough to me. Then let's quickly do the approach briefing. Threats for the arrival we're fairly unfamiliar with the airport, but um, the main thing is going to be that the airport is located in the valley, so we have high terrain all over the place. And we are eventually going to get uh, via the Arnav Star into the downwind and then receive radar vectors towards the final. So, that should uh, cover the threats. Of course, air traffic controller on the job training, as they call it in real life, is a threat for the arrival as well. So, um, we'll carefully monitor the instructions that we are going to get from air traffic control. And if there is anything that we have any doubts about, we are just going to tell them straight away. There is nothing wrong with um, telling anybody if you're unsure about something, so we are um, going to tell them as early as we can, so that we can get amended clearances if needed. Okay, then 250 below 100, forecast page is filled in. We are planned at 268 knots for the descent, so that should hopefully keep us far enough away from the aircraft in front of us. And then we are going to be slowed to 250 knots by the star relatively early already anyway. Then let's quickly check out the arrival and what we have over there. So we have the Babsa 1 Alpha arrival, which is from Babsa. Speed restriction 250 knots on this one. On 156 degrees, 32.2 miles towards Alpha India 513. Right turn 178, 12.7 in to Okpel. And then same track, 5.3 towards Alpha India 514. And same track, 6.7 Alpha India 515 above flight level 110. Then left turn, 113 degrees, 9.1 miles. Um, towards Alpha India 516, that is up here. And that has a speed restriction of 220 knots. From there we enter the downwind on a 182 degrees, 6.2 miles, waypoint 517. Same track, 5 miles, waypoint 518. Same track, 3 miles, waypoint 519 at 3000 feet. And then same track, 3 miles and 3 miles, waypoint 520 and 521. This leads us onto the ILS Victor approach, runway 36 right, chart 11 10, effective 27th of January. Frequencies, uh, sorry, courses 002, frequencies 108.1, set active both sides. Minimums 359 selected, field elevation 159, and we have that up here as well. Um, for the approach itself, we start at ASPAR, 
above 2500 feet and that is what we have in here let's give us a 180 knot restriction or 180 knots or less reset mcp altitude checked okay let's go ahead and start our descent already initially something like flight level 200 is going to keep us clear of the mountains while we continue the approach briefing so the approach starts at Aspar towards the final approach fix at 9.3 miles which is the Fox Fox runway 36 and that is in 2500 feet 7 miles out 3 degree glide slope down to a minimum of 359 which we have selected up here and in case of a missed approach climb to 500 feet so that's runway heading 500 and then Climbing turn right on radial 032 Lima Romeo Alpha to 1600. So we've got Lima Romeo Alpha, then 032. And then turn right, not before 2.5 DME, so that's the Lara 3 point. We'll make a right hand turn towards uh, Lara Vio A to Aspa, climbing 2500. Max 180 knots until inbound Lara Vio A, so that's the 180 knot restriction we have in here. Okay. That should pretty much be it then. Okay, diversion fuel, we have Ismir as an alternate. We need 2.5 tons to get there, and the arrival fuel is going to be 3.4. That means we have about 25 minutes of extra fuel. So, burning 400 kilos makes a landing weight of 64.9. So, pretty heavy aircraft actually. And looking at the landing runway, that's 3,400 meters up here on 3.6 right. So we probably will want to take the first exit and then go via Juliet up to the domestic apron up here, I suppose. So let's make it a flap 30 or break 3 landing initially. And if we need to, we can always override the brakes and take it manually up here. So that should pretty much be it. Do you have any questions on the approach briefing? No? Very nice, then let's do the descent checklist. Pressurization, landing altitude 150, anti-IS off, approach briefing fuel discussed, IS and outbox, checked and set. Descent checklist complete. So, as we're descending down, before we get into the airspace with air traffic control, I'm going to take a very quick break once more. And I will be back in a second. just got to contact me from approach control so 119 out of small 650 at the descent way star altitude 14,000 feet to range 136. Antalya approach, good evening, Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo, descending in Mount Babsa in formation Charlie. 
Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo, clear BAPSA 1 Alpha Arrival, expect ILS Victor on May 36 right, descent via star, flight level 150. Correction, altitude. Uh, could you just confirm, is it flight level or altitude? Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo, Alpha Arrival, expect ILS Victor. Thank you very much, altitude 15000 QNH 1026, Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo. Okay, at auto meter 1026. And 1026 set, passing 26,100 descending. Direct Alpha India 516, Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo. Okay, Alpha India 516. Execute. Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo, any speed restriction? There are no speed restrictions, free speed. Free speed, Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo. Okay, then we'll keep the um, Econ descent speed over here. Because we have traffic like 2000, uh, like 6 miles ahead already. For now, I will just keep the airplane a little bit above the Venus path over here. We can still correct that a little bit later on. But I don't want to accelerate right now because it would um, bring us even closer to the preceding aircraft and we don't want um, to make life too difficult for the air traffic controller, do we? By the way, this is absolutely lovely looking terrain, isn't it? This is the very first time that I'm actually experiencing snow in Turkey. I've been on holidays in Antalya two times and I'm I'm used to this place having like 30 degrees or something, not to seeing snow over here. That is that is a strange sight for me. That is a really strange sight for me. And Alamo donation of uh, 10 Schweizer Franken. Thank you so much for that. Wow, there's an airport. Where is that? What place is that? Let's have a look into the arrival chart. If there is anything on there. Because that looks like an airport where I need to fly. That one seems to have a beautiful approach. Just from the looks of it. And that is Lima Tango Fox Charlie. Is Parta. Is Parta Suleiman Demirel Airport. Never heard of that place yet, but it certainly looks like it has a very interesting arrival. Romeo left heading 100 degrees. What is the uh, speed of the preceding aircraft? Sorry, second please. The Turkish one Quebec Romeo, what is the speed of the preceding aircraft? Uh, stand by, break Turkish one Quebec what is your initial speed? Turkish one Quebec Romeo, what is your initial speed? Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo, it's 270. We are going to reduce 250. Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo, thanks. Weather is 270. Correction, 250. 250, Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo. Okay, level change. Yeah, because we were getting Turkish quite close one. to this gentleman. Station, 
And then we can put the seatbelt signs on already. This is an amazing look. I've just never seen Turkey covered in snow. I'm just mind blown by this right now. Sorry, guys. This is uh, something I've never seen before. Beautiful terrain here, absolutely beautiful. Okay, so seeing the vector he put us on. Turkish one Quebec Romeo, direct Alpha India 516. Okay, that looks good. Execute. Enough available. Enough. And then we can adjust this as well to get a better Wiener profile. Like a one Quebec Romeo descent once at a thousand. That ten thousand checked. Okay, let's see. What's the next limiting altitude restriction? 3000 at 519 are track required is checked. Well, we'll probably not get any speed increase anymore, so how about we just take the speed brakes to get this plane down? Next up is going to be tower on 126.1, decimal one. let's pre-select that already. There we go. Okay, so, with pretty much everything done over here. Come on. And Topsy is asking, how many hours do I have in real life? been a while since I counted it last, but I believe it's got to be something around 3,000, 3,500, something like that. Okay, so, since it's a training day anyway, let's not only make a training for a traffic control, but let's also make it training for us by hand flying the entire approach. And we can get rid of that speed break again. I don't know when he can clear us further down, but seeing that there are still mountains in front of us, let's not get uh, back too close towards the profile because um, there would be no sense using the speed break right now only to level the plane off in 100 in case he can't clear us further down due to limits on the radio, uh, sorry, on the minimum radar vectoring altitude or something like that. Turkish 18 Victor, altitude 7,000 feet. Okay, he clears the Turkish further down, just about 10 miles ahead. Yeah, then we definitely don't Turkish need to speed brakes. Turkish one Quebec Romeo descent altitude 8,000 feet. Okay, so much about it. We'll just uh, we are just 800 above the profile. That's not going to make much of a difference anyway. Ok, 
Okay, we're clear of the guy on the left there, and we're following the gentleman in front. Okay, now we're flying into that um, valley. I can run back home here, this is an altitude 4000 feet. That 4000 checked. So now we're flying into this valley over here. There's high terrain on the right side, and on the left side there's also high terrain, which makes it Antalya located in um, quite an interesting place there for landing. I can very well imagine that this might have some great effects on the um, winds when it's hot. Okay, ten tracks, little balanced, four pumps, lights, on, angle of bank 25, air conditioner pressurization 3.0, descending set, fast mills on, recall checked, 1 to 1.5, deselected, ten tracks complete. Interesting discussion in the chat down there about hand flying. Um, it's not about, you know, it's not about um, showing off or anything like that. It's really that you can only be good at something if you do it regularly. And uh, Robin is asking, would you do that in real life? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, I fly manually a lot below flight level 200 in real life and seeing an approach like this which is, you know, not very complicated. We have some high terrain around, yes, but we also have good visibility so that we can see everything. Um, I would absolutely use an approach like this to uh, keep up the hand flying skills because you do need to do that on a regular basis. Okay, so we have the speed limit of 220 knots on 516, so let's start slowing down. So yeah, the hand flying is not at all about showing off or something like that. It is really about keeping up your skills and, um, you know, the more often you do something, the better you get at it. And, you know, live stream or not, why not use the chance? After all, we're flying to a training event here in Antalya because all the air traffic controllers we have online today are actually in training. So, why don't we use it for that as well? Of course, should things become too busy because of whatever reason, then I will just put the autopilot back on again. You know, disconnecting the autopilot is not a final action. You can always re-engage it should you need to. And Robin, exactly, you name it, use the right level of automation at all times. I just want to have a this at altitude 3000 feet. So Robin, that's actually very important what you say there. Use the right level of automation at all times. And in an approach like this, where we have good visibility, 
and uh, where it's not too busy, we just have a single aircraft ahead of us, you know, there is absolutely nothing wrong with hand flying the plane in condition like these. In fact, I would go so far to say that conditions like these are exactly those conditions where pilots should practice manual flight. Because, you know, you just have the capability to do it right here. And my Russian friend, whose name I can't pronounce, is asking, can you do that with the flight directors off? Here you go. So, flight directors are recycled. Okay, let's do a first check. Frequencies 108.1, .1, active nav 1, active nav 2. Six rings, Romeo 36 right, turn 4, items, India Alpha Lima Yankees, standby instrument set, courses 002, first complete, approach checklist, altimeter instrument instruments, set cross check, approach rates, check and set, approach checklist complete. Okay, let's level off here in 3000 and let's get the speed back to the up speed. Remember in the 737NG, at these speeds, 220 knots, 60% N1, and uh, 5 degrees of pitch is roughly what you need to maintain level flight. So, as you can see, I've just set my pitch and my thrust as ballpark figures, 5 degrees pitch, 60% N1, and the plane maintains its altitude perfectly like this. Left heading 090 degrees, Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo. Okay, the other guy is just on the border of the display here already, so that's not going to be an issue anymore. Let's go, flap one. Here comes the ballooning effect. Turkish one to that Romeo turn left in three six zero degrees, clear dial and six approach from the three six right to report on established. Turkish one Quebec Romeo left heading three six zero, clear dial vector on a three six right. Good. Okay, that vector should lead us right onto the center line. Thank you. 
I'm just adjusting the bank angle right now so that we end up with a track vector line here right on the extended center line. Hey, localizer alive. That's five. Okay, the cabin should be secured by now. And here comes the glide slope. Turkish one Quebec Romeo established. Turkish one Quebec Romeo, thanks. Contact tower on frequency 126 decimal 1. Have a nice landing. 126 decimal 1, Turkish one Quebec Romeo, thank you very much. Good luck. Antalya Tower, good evening. Turkish one Quebec Romeo, ILS Victor 365. Twenty five hundred. Continue of British one. Have a coming. Romeo ran bei 36 Grad, fehlt die Land. And Unique Gamer, thank you very much for the 200, is that Indian Rupee donation? Just gotta keep it short right now because we're reaching 4 miles, so gear down, that's 15, match speed, landing checklist. Start switches, continue, sorry, start switches auto, recall, check, speed brake, arm green light, landing gear down 3 green, auto brakes 3 set, preps 30, set zero plus 5. And then we have flaps 30, 30, green lights, landing lights, on, landing checklist complete. 1,000. Correct. So, a little bit off to the right of the center line, but we are well within the acceptable localizer deviation of a maximum of one dot. So that is not a problem. This is really where real life comes in handy with your pilot monitoring, who is going to do things like setting the speed, etc. for you so that you can fully focus on flying the airplane. 500, continue. Oh. Approaching minimums. Back. Continue. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. We break up, thrust is normal. Idle reverse. One hundred knots. Manual brakes, auto brake disarm, 80 knots, Juliet, 
Tango, Juliet, 1 to 1, das ist mein Einer, Turkish, 1, Quebec, Romeo, good night. Okay, so Juliet as brief means we go straight ahead. Antalya Ground, good evening, Turkish 1, Quebec, Romeo, vacating into Juliet. Turkish Which is here to the left. Ground, good evening, welcome. Taxi to stand 110 via Juliet and Lima. Stand 110 via Juliet and Lima, Turkish 1 Quebec Romeo. Okay, so let's write that down. 110 via Juliet and Lima. Then let's quickly check the chart to see where we are about to go. So we are in Juliet, then we turn right onto Lima, and then our stand is going to be 110, which is over here. Okay, so we enter the main apron directly via Lima. Okay, perfect. Taxi routing is understood. Then we can clean up our airplane. I've never landed landed on 36 right in Antalya. In the simulator, whenever I went here, I landed on 36 center or on 18 center. So it's the first time I'm actually seeing this part of the airport. Looks nice though. And the taxi is not much longer than I initially thought it would be, so that is good as well. So quite a wide turn over here, that's why I'm keeping the speed slightly above the 10 knots. And clear left, clear right. Okay. So GSX gate 110. We don't need to follow me. Handling by Turkish Airlines, please. So this is going to be a rather sharp turn. Let's get the speed down a little bit. Stand 102, we go straight ahead to 110, that is almost at the end of the domestic terminal over there. Not the APU. And we are over 63 tons, so we cannot do single engine taxi. We'll have to keep both engines running. That's our stand over there. So, 108. 109. And the next one is ours. Here we are, 110. A little bit hard to see the taxi line at first. But here we go, that looks good. Okay, 
Okay, shotgun engine number two. AP1 bus. Here's the Marshala. I'm gonna stop here, the pushback tuck is too close to my lines. Okay, break set, two blue, one red, engine's dead. Engine 1 and 2 below 20%, transit shutdown checklist. Electrical on APU, fast melts off, probe beat auto, anti is off, voice recorder on, air compacts auto, engine bleeds on, APU bleed off, exterior light set, start switches auto, auto brakes off, speed brakes down at end, flaps. Well, would be nice if we could read the gauge. Here it is, up no lights, parking brake set, start levers cut off, weather radar off. Transponder 2000 standby, CBRCB in, cockpit door unlocked, transit shutdown checklist complete. Okay, welcome to Antalya. So, let's prepare the airplane for the flight back towards Istanbul. But most importantly, shocks in, brakes off. So, we'll request the jetway, and when that is connected, we'll take the external pit power. We will need a fuel truck, and we will also need the loaders. Okay, I actually decided to stop right on point. Very nice. So, the jetway is on. They can open the doors and then please get me the ground power. And then you gentlemen can start the boarding, please. So regarding the question earlier on on the fuel pump usage with the APU in the turnaround, as said, in my airline we just leave the fuel pumps on at all times. And um, that's really it. Okay then, let's have a look in the Sim Toolkit Pro to see how the landing has been. And where is it? Here it is. So, 222 feet a minute. And exactly as Unique Gamer said. Okay, so that's been our route of flight with the little vector to get us clear of the um, preceding airplane over here. Very nice base turn, very nice final turn. Very good vectoring as well. This was a lovely single turn there without any wings level segment and then let's get the landing report so here we are slightly to the right of the center line just beyond the aiming point 222 feet a minute with the wings almost level slight right bank that is absolutely acceptable so all in all a little bit to the right of the center line and a little bit on the positive side of things, but absolutely okay. And overall, I would call it not a textbook landing because we've been a little bit to the right of the center line, but overall a very good landing that I am absolutely happy with. Now, next time, gonna aim for the center line a little bit better, but um, that's gonna be it then. Okay, you guys can start unloading over there. 
And then let's go ahead and prepare the flight back towards Istanbul. Gonna be another very short trip over there. And um, that's gonna be it. So let's go right over into Simbrief. And then I'm going to show you guys again how I do the flight planning for a trip like this. So, Firefox, thank you very much. And then the first thing, of course, is to decide on the call sign that we're going to use for the return flight. And in our case, since I have absolutely no idea of um, call signs and flight numbers of Turkish Airlines, let's just use Flight Radar and do this. So, we're going from Antalya towards Istanbul. And here we go already. We've got a couple of flights there. I like this one. And here we go. Operated by 737-900. And that is actually the return flight from what we used earlier on. So, Turkish 3 Romeo Delta. The next thing I do then is to log on to VATSIM to check if the call sign is actually still available. And we can log in, so it is available. In other words, we can go ahead and use that for our flight planning. So then let's go right back into Simbri. New flight. And then will be the Turkish 2409. I'm going to mute the simulator in the background for a second so that uh, we don't hear all those engines. And we'll go from Antalya towards Istanbul. Alternate, where is that? Uh, that's quite a way off. I'd say if we take the um, old Istanbul airport as an alternate, that should be good enough. LTBA. Then, as airframe, I'm still using my test PMDG registration here. And we'll change that over to the one that we are flying right now, which is the uh, Juliet Yankee Alpha. Turkish cost index, I couldn't find something for the 73, but on the triple they seem to use 27, so we're going to use that. Call sign Turkish 3 Romeo Delta, as we looked up earlier. And departure time, if we say, take something around 25 or so, that should normally work quite well. Passengers, they have 169 seats in there, and we'll actually make it a full flight, 169. And let's take a little bit of freight as well, 2.4 tons. That is quite a bit, but then again, the flight is going over mountainous terrain, so it surely doesn't hurt us if we just take a little bit of extra. Significant weather chart over here, nothing. Then let's quickly look into the weather as well. And, okay, you can't see the pop-up using the display, then that's fine enough. So, departure runway probably going to be 36 center, I suppose. So, let's update that, and that shall be good enough for me. Generate the flight. And Metal Eye, um, Istanbul Atatürk is closed. Are you sure about that? To my knowledge, it is only closed for. Um, to my knowledge, it's only closed for passenger flights and not for cargo or VIP. So as alternate, it should be available, shouldn't it? But let's quickly check that. Um, no terms. Atatürk, PSR US. Well, let's see if there is anything written. Okay, this is Turkish. I don't understand that. Okay, Metal Eye says the airport is not available and Requiem 10 suggests Lima Tango Bravo uniform. Okay, then we are quickly going to recalculate this. Alternate Lima Tango Bravo uniform. Let's see where that is. Ah, oh, yeah, pretty close as well, even though I don't like this route. Let's see if we look into that. Alternate airports, analyze. Okay, 75 miles. Yeah, no problem. We can take this. We can definitely take this. That looks good. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Okay, so generate that flight once more. So LTBU it's going to be. Okay, so that looks pretty good for me. Pre-file that please. 
always checks Watson a little bit to get the pre-file link up. By the way, for those of you wondering, um, if you are pre-filing a flight while you are locked in, you either need to be 90 seconds locked in to my knowledge, or the airplane has to be stationary for at least 30 seconds. Then you can pre-file a flight plan while you are locked in already. By the way, don't worry about the white screen. I see the same thing right now. This is just the Vatsim website um, taking a little bit of time right now. But anyway, while that thing is um, preparing there, how about we go ahead already and um, go back into our airplane. You guys can start unloading the uh, cargo in the aft there. Passenger deboarding is almost complete as well. And the fuel truck is here, very good. In that case, let's go ahead and get a SIM toolkit so that we can get our flight plan here. Okay, load last SIM brief plan. Aircraft is gonna be my test registration and fly now. And in the meantime, I've pre-filed the plan as well. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and prepare this. So, weather over in Istanbul, that is going to be the main concern. But currently, it's actually looking very good. Recent sh snow showers and the forecast says that to the evening they have gust 30, but that's going to be down the runway, light snow showers. And then over the night they get snow showers again, okay. And then what do we have here? Tempo till 2100. Thunderstorm and snow, blowing snow, okay. So there is a chance for thunderstorms to move through. And if we look at this, the weather cell currently seems to be quite over the airport. The good news is if that's over the airport now, then it's going to be gone by the time that we get there. So um, let's see what we're going to do with that fuel. Um... The alternate, of course, is located in the same general area, but they don't have thunderstorms forecast over there. So, I would say we take half an hour extra fuel and then we are settled. So if we take half an hour on top, that's going to be like 1,200 kilos. So, 6.5 is going to be our new block fuel then. So 6.5 and you can start refueling now. Thank you very much. Okay, so that much about the flight planning and how we do the fuel decisions. So then let's go ahead and start preparing the airplane. We're in Antalya, request flight plan and we take the flight from Antalya to Istanbul, please. Select. Turkish 3 Romeo Delta. Going to take a little while to request that route, but don't worry about it. There we go, route up and ready. Load. And then let's get the ATIS before we brief an incorrect runway once again. Departure ATIS 136125. Let's see if the Vatsum voice servers are working this time. No, they aren't. Okay, then we've just got to use the tax ATIS one more time. But, not a problem. So... Here's vPilot. I just requested the tax ATIS. Antalya departure ATIS information echo from 1820 Zulu. Departure runway 36 right. Departure frequency 119065. 330 at 14, 5 degrees, 1026. Okay, so runway 36 right, it will be again. Very good that we looked at this, otherwise I would surely have planned runway 36 center. But okay, that's the reason we do this. So, runway 36 right, and then we will go towards Exxon. So probably Exxon 1 Charlie departure, I suppose. But this time I'm going to get ATC clearance before I do the briefing so that we don't have to rebrief. Okay, and for now we'll just take the ILS Zulu 36 right. We'll have to look into that anyway. 
when we are en route. So this is part 2 Alpha. And looking at the plan, we go towards Sadik, so we take the Sadik transition. Cost in X27, reserve fuel 2.1, zero fuel weight 63.1, that's quite a bit. And flight level 320. By the way, talking about it, we should maybe just quickly get the boarding going. We're gonna have 168 passengers, and you can start boarding already. Refueling is in progress, very good. And then 2,000 kilos in the front, 1,500 kilos in the back. You guys can start the loading as well. And now we can go back into this. Average wind 302 at 26. ISI deviation minus 1, that makes it minus 49 degrees in the cruise. And transition altitude, let's see, we'll need the charts for that. So unload this flight, import from Simbrief, thank you. We can change this straight away, departure on May 36 right, add to route, and then it's gonna be the XN1 Charlie, I guess. Synchronize, let's have a look at that departure chart. Can't find anything in here that this would not be the departure to expect. So I guess it will be the one to expect, but we'll ask air traffic control about it before we go for briefing. Anyway, transition altitude 15,000, that is the reason we got this open. And then, let's see if we've got any engine out information up here. Once again, I'm using the website from uh, Blackbox711, which is really, really good for this stuff. But unfortunately, there is nothing available for Antalya in here. That is unfortunate. Well, in that case, I know that there is nothing for Antalya in the virtual performance tool. So I'm quickly going to get out my EFB, the real one, and check what my airline has there in real life. So if you don't see something happening right now, then don't be surprised. I'm currently doing something on my real-life EFB. And there we got it. Okay, so. At 5.5 DME from Lima Romeo Alpha, Lara Antalya. We are going to make a right hand turn towards Topoz. And then hold 002 inbound right turns. That means we draw a 182 radial. And then we'll put that at the end of the legs page as well. We'll put hold next and we'll put 002 right hand turns. Then let's see if we can find Topoz somewhere on here. Well, we might as well do it this way. Ah, yeah, on the extended center line. So that's going to be over the open water. 182 radial, so it's in the 3000 MSA area. So we are going to climb the 3000 in case of an engine failure. Okay. That should be the necessary FMC setup for now. And Google TRX is asking, do you use ForeFlight as an airline pilot? Uh, no, we don't. Okay, refueling is complete. Start level 320. Let's see the runway elevation. 375 minus 50 feet that the FMC adds, so airport elevation 320 then, so we make it 300. Let's see if there is any initial climb published, but I can't find any on the chart, okay. So we're just gonna leave it like this, heading 002. 
break is released and stays released for now. Let's put Lara VOR active. It's going to be an arm of departure anyway, but I want to declutter the displays by removing the ILS information. And then for the MFRA, we are going to set a thousand feet above the airport elevation. So 1200 is going to do the job. Okay, set. So before we get, or before we do the departure briefing, let's call for the clearance. Because I don't want to brief something wrong once again. Antalya ground, good. Evening, Turkish Tri Romeo Delta information. Echo request clearance to Istanbul. Okay, so we stand by. So, if we still have to wait for this, we might as well start with the checklist. So, transit before start checklist. Ah. Turkish Tri Romeo Delta, go ahead. Turkish Tri Romeo Delta, cleared to Istanbul, Exxon 1 Charlie departure, runway 36 right, climb 1 1000 feet, squawk 6405, we check information Foxtrot. Tri Romeo Delta, is that correct? Okay, so let's start by checking information Foxtrot. That's Antalya departure ATIS. 1850 Zulu, departure on my 36 right, frequency 1965, 330 at 13, 5 degrees 1026. Perfect. Then climb to 11,000 feet. That, and then we have runway 36 right, X1 Charlie departure, squawk 6405. Perfect. Okay, then we can as well start with the departure briefing. So, threats for the departure. Well, we do have high terrain, and therefore we have. Well, I'll deselect ATC for a second. So we have high terrain and therefore we do have a special engine out departure um, which is straight out to 5.5 miles. We'll brief that in a moment. Apart from that, if we have a look into the departure chart once again, the departure is into the mountains, into the valleys. So we've got to be sure to make that right hand turn early enough and don't miss on that. Apart from that, I don't see any threats for this departure. So let's go ahead and do the route check. We're going from Lima Tango Alpha India towards Lima Tango Foxtrot Mike, Tango Hotel Yankee 3 Romeo Delta, and the routing is via Exxon Upper Mike 855 CISP, and that's for the arrival already. Romeo 35 right, ground distance 336, and we've got 343 in here, 3.8 remaining, reserve fuel 2.1. That is just perfect. Okay, so, um,. UTC time 14.23, altimeter 1026, reading 200, MFA 1200, flight directors are on, the masters on my side, standby instruments set. Left seat takeoff, one may 36 right, flaps 5, noise abatement procedure number 2 with a buck up at 1500 feet, specially OSIT straight at 5.5 DME from Lara VOR, and then a right hand turn towards Toputs, and we hold our Toputs, that is at the end of the legs page, inserted and marked with the radial here as well. Which is going to be 002, right hand turns, and Topos is over the water, so we climb to an altitude of 3000 feet. Emergencies as briefed earlier on. Then, for the pushback and the taxi, let's get out the charts once again. So, we're parking a stand 110, pushback either to the left or the right hand side, we'll have to see, and then we will either get via Lima or via Golf. And then most likely either Lima or Golf, maybe Juliet, maybe not. Might be that we go all the way down here as well. And then somehow we go onto Mike and then Rome 36 right for the departure. X1 Charlie departure, which is on a chart 10 3 Charlie, effective 18th of July. Let's have a look at that. 
Three, six, right. Exxon one, Charlie. Transition altitude, 15,000 versus 15,001. And then let's have a look for the routing. First of all, immediately after takeoff, contact Antalya approach. We'll do that. Initial contact with approach unit for departing aircraft shall contain call sign, SID, and crossing altitude. Check 8 is to confirm public frequencies. That is 1965. We've had, we've checked that already. And ATC may clear aircraft direct to waypoint published in the SID. After reaching this waypoint, follow the remaining part of the SID. Okay, we do that. Then, for the routing, we can... Continue on the runway heading 002, 10 miles to Alpha India 034, maximum 230 knots. We have Alpha India 034, 230 knots. And then a left hand turn, 342 degrees, 20.9 miles towards Kumru. And then 350, 28.6 nautical miles towards Axon. Initial climb, 110. We'll insert that over here. And apart from that, we should have a speed restriction of 250 knots below flight level 100 or below 10,000 feet over here. That's it. Any questions? No, very good. Then we can do the transit before start checklist. Actually, you know what? We're going to do the performance first, provided that they've finished the boarding already, because then we can read the entire checklist. Yeah, fuel truck can go. Boarding is complete. Loading is complete. Very nice. So everything can go. Start the APU. We'll just have to keep the jetway because we are on the external um, jetway GPU. So we've got to keep the jetway until the APU is actually running. But okay. Let's say hello to the passengers and then we do the checklist. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening from the cockpit. This is your captain speaking. My name is Emmanuel and in the name of Turkish Airlines, I would like to welcome you all on board our flights to... Istanbul. The flight time today is going to be approximately one hour at a cruising altitude of 32,000 feet. We do expect a smooth flight and maybe some minor turbulences on the way into Istanbul then as there are currently some rain showers passing through Istanbul. Nonetheless, we hope that you are going to enjoy the flight. The cabin crew is shortly going to point out the safety demonstration, so please pay your full attention as that is not only for your own safety but also for the safety of the passengers sitting around you. Finally, we would like to say welcome on board, sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight with us. Okay, so transit before Star Treks. Oh man, whenever I want to run the checks, something comes into it. So power can go, jetway can go, brake is set, trucks can go, GSX can start preparing. Okay then, let's do this. Zero fuel weight, 63.5 versus 63.1, close enough, makes it a gross weight of 70.1 tons. Now to put that into relation, 70 tons takeoff weight. If we fly the 737-800 on a four hour flight to the Canary Islands with a full complement of 189 passengers, that is roughly 70 tons takeoff weight. So, in the 737-900 over here, you have that for a one-hour flight. So, that's just amazing. But okay, so that's what we have. We can do 24k takeoff over here, and we'll make it a flaps 5 takeoff. Dry runway, CG 25.6, giving us 5 units of trim, which is now set. Takeoff speeds 46, 47, 55, and that's set. Take off page 2, 1500, 1500, that's all we need. Okay, so, final attempt. Transit before start checklist. Gear pins, 1 to 3 removed. Oxygen test 100%, yaw damper on, fuel. We require 5.3, we have 6.5 with 4 pumps on. Fasten belts on, window heat on, air condition pressurization, packs auto bleeds on set, pressurization mode selector auto, instruments cross checked, auto brakes RTO, speed brakes, down detent, parking brake set, start from cutouts which is normal, radius radar and transponder set and standby, radar and aileron trims 3 and 0, takeoff briefing discussed, PA complete, FMC and CDU set, and mono IS bugs, automatic, 
three, uh, full 24k, speeds 4.5, set. Stop trim, 5 units, 5.1 units set. Performance weight and balance, sign send. Phones off, EFB, airplane mode stowed, flight deck windows and cockpit door. Locked, doors closed, passengers seated before start checklist complete. Let's go ahead and get the pushback clearance. Belkish 3 Romeo Delta, stand 110, request pushback and startup. Delta, please set Quark 6405. Quark 6405, Turkish 3 Romeo Delta. Okay, small typo there in this Quark, but it's set now. Delta, um, I will call you back for pushback. Uh, we have a problem here. Uh, Roger. Okay, so let's see. What is that problem? There is no traffic behind. There is an aircraft over there, but I suppose he's probably going to go via here. At least that would enable the controller to push us, so I don't think it's him blocking us. It's not that guy either. Oh, we'll see. I'm sure he's going to give us a call when he's ready. And if not, in like two minutes or so, we are just going to ask him again. In the meantime, a couple of the um, comments that you guys made. So, sorry, I've been rather busy with the pre-flight procedure as I wanted to get going. Um, let's see. Uh, jump shot 244, does the weather radar work? No, it doesn't. There just is no working weather radar in my subflight simulator. See my video on why the Asobo weather radar is useless for more details. Then, um, JD Shram, any link to 900 wing views? Well, I don't have a link to the wing views, but we can. Have a look at a couple over here while we're waiting for the pushback clearance. This is actually pretty nice, I have to say. With a shadow on the wing down there and the reflection of the winglet with the sun just coming from right behind us. This is nice as well. Let's hope they moved that stair far far enough away over there, otherwise it's going to be a pretty short flight, I'm sure. Giant 2242, taxi via Alpha, Golf, Delta 2, hold short of Delta Okay, the Giant gets his taxi clearance. So the giant is the guy back there, Atlas Air 747. Delta, push and start approved, south, QNH1026. QNH1026, push and start approved, facing south, Turkish 3 Romeo Delta. Okay, facing south means nose to the right. Then let's get GSX to work. Nose to the right, please. Before start checklist below the line, air compacts off, anti collision light on, park and brake set, transponder alt off, before start checklist complete. That's master caution air conditioning, dual bleeds. Okay, so just a quick check to make sure the trucks are actually removed. Yes, they are. Brakes off. Okay. Man, that was close with the stairs. That was really close. Okay, the 747 is over on the parallel taxiway, so he's not gonna pose a problem for us. Uh, 
That's quite a long pushback over here, that's why I'm waiting with the engine start. No need to have the engines running while we're pushing in calm taxi anyway, so... Normally when they start, when they slowly start turning you over here, it's a very good point in real life to commence the engine start. And they just do it in a few seconds. Let's go ahead and start engine number two. And two. All pressure. And one. Okay, good start on two, starting one. And that was a superb pushback once again. Look at that. Unbelievable with GSX. Okay, we have N2, all press, N1. Start a cutout, monitor one, number one stable. Okay, where's the ramp agent? Looks like she is gone already. And flight control track, full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral, rudders, left, right. Neutral. Recall. Check before taxi checklist. Generators on if you off. Start switches auto. Propeed on. NTIs off. Air conditioning. Packs auto. Bleeds on. Isolation off. Auto. Flaps. 5 required. 5 selected and the green light. Step trim 5.1 required set. Start leaves idly turn. Flight controls check. Recall check before taxi checks complete. Turkish Tri Romeo Delta request taxi. Hold in position, Turkish Trio Mir Delta. We have the traffic on the right hand side inside. We could pass to the left of him. Romeo Akshabar, Delta 7, November, Whiskey, Formation Fox, Ross, Trans 2, 3, 0, Boy, Kribbles, Tumor, Request, Kribbles, Travel. And Debakis, um, in the comments, what Istanbul scenery is this? Um, just to be sure, right now we're in, in Antalya and it is the Just Zim scenery and earlier in Istanbul we used the scenery TR scenery. Thank you. 
Adam, MXI Design have a sale where they donate money to Turkey. Any tips? Considering to buy either Thessaloniki, Tsankintos or Parfos. Um, Turkish Tree Romeo Delta, taxi order point down with Mike, Norambush, you can follow up on Atolia Airlines, 737 Turkish Tree Romeo Delta, taxi order point down with Mike, Norambush, you can follow the Atolia 737 on our right hand side. Okay, clear left, clear right, brakes off, config. Checked. So we just follow that 737 ahead. That is going to make our life a lot easier. Now, um, Adam, to answer your question, I'm not familiar with any of the three sceneries from MXI right now, but Thessaloniki surely has a very interesting approach in real life, so Thessaloniki might be the one to go for. I don't know about the others, they might be nice as well, but Thessaloniki is the one I know from real life that has a very interesting approach. I believe it's the RMP34 or something like that. Okay, in the meantime, quick look into the um, taxi chart. So we go Lima, Juliet, Mike, 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 and then November is the full length, okay. That's easy. Okay, clear on the right hand side. By the way, if you are looking for sales that help um, the good cause for Turkey at the moment, then Inibuilds is running one of them as well where they are going to donate 25% of all the revenue that they're yeah. making. So Inibuilds might be something to check out as well. Their Heathrow and their Los Angeles sceneries are really good. Their Detroit is amazing as well. So um, that's definitely stuff to check out at the moment. So Juliet is going to be the next to the left here. A little bit on the fast side. But it's a pretty wide turn here as well, so 15 knots should be okay. Okay, before takeoff checklist down to the line. Config. What's that master caution? The overwing exits again, okay. Let's just put the thrust lever forward once again, and then it should normally go, and it does in this case as well. So, config is checked, flaps 5, 5, green light, step trim 5.1, set, takeoff briefing, left seat takeoff, runway 36 right, flaps 5, noise abatement procedure number 2 with a buck up at 1500. Special engine outsit, straight at 5.5 dB Lara, then right turn towards Topos, holds 002 inbound, right hand turns. Climbing 3,000 feet, that's going to keep us safe as Topos is over the water. Immediately after takeoff, we're going to contact the departure control on 119.650. And then we will um, follow the sit straight ahead for 10 miles and then a right turn out. So that's not really going to be anything interesting there. Okay, any questions on the departure brief? No, very good. Then 
cabin secure, B4 takeoff checklist complete down to the line. Oh, quite a bit of traffic over there, nice. So, uh, oh, departure. 119 or decimal 65. Pre select that already. We are requesting I just can't help myself, the 900 looks really good. Somebody asked me earlier in the um, comments which 737 I believe looks best. And I honestly got to say, the more I look at the 900, the more I get to like its looks. So I really slowly start to uh, get to the conclusion that it's the 900 that I like the most. Might of course just be that it's still very new factor. Because even for me, I've been beta testing it for like two months now, but even for me, it is still a pretty new airplane, so... Um, I just can't help myself but like the 900. Antalya Tower, good evening. Uh, Walker 1772, we have uh, information Foxtrot and we would like to receive, please, clearance to Milano as filed. Walker 1772, Antalya Ground, good evening. Information Golf, clear your destination via missing one Charlie departure runway. This is right, initial flight 1 1641. Walker 1772, could you please uh, give me the um, SID again? Walker 1772, stand by, break, break, Anatolia 1, uh, Zulu Delta, contact R1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1, 1, 6.1
Okay, so he's going. The guy behind us actually called in before us. And there is one arrival. I guess we're going to wait for that arrival and then we'll be caught after him. Okay, so let's have a look at that guy's landing. Now the pressure is on, 200 people are watching. You better make a good landing, my friend. Okay, there he comes. Oh, show me something good, please. Uh, he flares a bit high. That's gonna be a bit more positive. Yep. That was a little bit more positive. He just flared a tad too high. Okay, so, clear on the right, confirm the route back. Line up runway 36 right. Our takeoff check is below the line. MCP. Set. Transponder. TARA. Strobe lights on. Holding it landing lights. The Air Baltic is still on the runway. And turning off now, it seems. And we should get going, get going any moments now. Romeo Delta Ramay 36 right, cleared for takeoff when airborne bomb on Iron Decimal 650. Thank you very much, bye bye. Okay, landing lights on before takeoff tracks complete. Stabilized, set to takeoff thrust. Order throttle disconnect again. Here we go. Fixed. Tracked.
Oh no, you know. Antalya yeah, Press, good evening, Turkish Tiro, Mir Delta 1400 on the Exxon Long Charlie. Turkish Tiro, Mir Delta, hello again, Antalya Press, Radio Contact. Climb flight level 240 and unrestricted, and pushing direct to your exit. Climb unrestricted level 240 direct, Exxon Turkish Tiro, Mir Delta. Okay, flaps one, and flaps up. And it's all the alarms on the Delta. Any set time restricted, Unknown, direct to Axon. Execute. Enough available. Enough. A visual with the terrain, happy to accept the direct. Yes, I am. And you are currently live in front of 200 people. <laughs> so nice to meet you. Nice to fight. Yes. Okay, flaps up, no lights. Set standard. Passing T0, climbing 240 after take up checklist. Always nice when somebody recognizes you. Okay, after take up checks. I can impress 2.0 climbing set. Altimeters, standard passing level 46 climbing 240 after take up checklist complete. The standby remains on local since we are still below the MSA. We don't see it very often on my channel because usually we fly in areas with low MSAs, but when you're setting the altimeter as standard, be sure to keep the standby altimeter on the local QNH until you are actually above the MSA. The MSA in this sector on our departure is uh, 10,000 feet, so only at 10,000 we will actually select the standby altimeter to standard QNH. Okay, the airplane can fly itself just as well. Command A. This is nice. You put you put the autopilot on and the plane doesn't do a single movement. That is how it should be. That means that you have flown it correctly. After Alpha India, uh, Alpha India 711, uh, turn left uh, to uh, zero degrees. Uh, By the way, when you are departing mountainous areas, you can always use the vertical situation display as well to view your situation in relation to the terrain. Like you can see how we have 4,000 foot high mountains over here on our flight path, but um, obviously the view outside the window does just the same job. Okay, passing 10,000, standby to standard, and we can do the 10 checks. Fuel, balanced, with 4 pumps on, lights, off, APU off, air condition and pressurization, 4.3, climbing, set, temperatures are good, fasten belts, auto, recall checked, and finally 1 to 1.5, monitoring, 10 checks complete. Okay, so we are on the way. It's funny when you're looking outside and you're looking back to the airport and you see where the airplane currently is. You can really see how in the 900 we are at a much lower altitude than where we would typically be in the 737-800 on the same flight profile. You can really see how we have 
a less alkaline gradient here. Turkish fight tank here, please. I'll tell you approach. By their contact. Quantity climb flight level 240, unrestricted. Quantity climb flight Ben, um, Lucas Arman is asking in the comments, do you use the yoke? Yes, I do. I use the uh, Thrustmaster Boeing yoke. Ben, Gench, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, when will the weather radar come? Well, first of all, Asobo needs to make a proper API. And when that is made, then um, I guess it's going to take, don't know, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a few months or something like that. Something in that region. Then Google TRX, um, I have all the callouts turned on in the PMDG FMC, but I only hear the V1 during takeoff. Not sure how to troubleshoot that. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure either, but write to support.pmdg.com, or rather, write a ticket on the support portal of support.pmdg.com, and I'm sure that they will be able to um, give you some help with that. Turkish 3, Roma Delta, contact, unclear control south on frequency 124 decimal 075, and the next flight. 124 decimal 075, Turkish 3, Roma Delta, awesome job of uh, everybody of you. Ankara control, good evening, Turkish 3, Roma Delta, passing level 177, climbing 240, inbound exit. Three, I'm at level 3, 2, level 3, 2, 0, Turkish, 3, Romeo, dead. Dead. That's 3, 2, 0, tracked, and that is set once, twice, and three times. And we are monitoring 121.5. The sun starts getting a little bit low, so let's get those uh, sun trails out. And Julian, the new 900 is both the standard and the, um, yeah. Bisney, is there a Ukrainian international livery in the PMDG Ops Center by any chance? No, it is not, but it has been requested on flightsim.to as a freeware livery already, so I'm sure that it's going to be available within, well, the very latest a couple of weeks. And Jihu, I just heard you on the radio. Oh, nice. It's always nice if um, somebody recognizes you on the radio and um, tells you that they like what you are doing. And the funny thing is, on Vatsim that happens ever so often, like every couple of flights I'm doing, I'm getting a message like, hey, aren't you 737 and G driver? I like your videos. And uh, that's always very nice, but I've actually had that happen in real life already, on, in real air traffic control. Somebody said like, hey, aren't you the guy with the YouTube channel? And I'm like, yeah, I am. Yeah, that was funny. That was really funny, um, having that real air traffic controller recognizing me from YouTube. Yeah, I'm reading here, flight level 343, must be an issue at Altimeters. Uh, and the Apple pilot. Hey again, quick question. I want to become a pilot. I'm planning to do an ATPL license. How hard will it be to get into an airline after my training? Well, that is a little bit of a thing. Um, it, I would say it mostly depends on how good you actually are. So be, be sure that you invest as much as you can into that theory to get the theory right because those grades will be asked for by most airlines and um, then you know also practice your manual flying skills especially if you're a flight simmer you know um, turn the flight director off do some raw data flying and stuff like that to get as proficient as possible 
and most importantly don't try to fixate on getting to a certain place like if you only want to um, go to an airline at the airport nearest to you then it's probably not gonna work but let's say if you're from Europe and you're willing to go to pretty much any airline in Europe that would offer you a place then I would say it will be possible to get a job as an airline pilot like you might have to go to um, for example Ryanair or Wizz Air or something the likes at first but Go there, gather a couple of hours, and then the doors will be open for you at other airlines as well. Then, Julian, when do you use the extra fuel pumps? At the start of the flight or at the end? Um, with that, I'm sure you refer to the auxiliary fuel system in the 900 ER. Now, um, here's the thing, you don't have fuel pumps there. The switches you see are actually not fuel pumps, but they are just auxiliary fuel transfer switches. There are no pumps. So the way this thing works is that you have the auxiliary tanks in front and aft of the center tank and it transfers the fuel using cabin pressure. So it, it uses air and no fuel pumps. There are no pumps in the auxiliary fuel system. So just put the switches into the auto position and there is an additional computer installed in the front cargo hold when you have the aux fuel system fitted. And with the switches in auto, as soon as the center tank fuel quantity falls below a predetermined value, the system is going to open the transfer valves and will transfer the fuel from the aux tanks into the center tanks. Once the center tank fuel is above another certain predetermined value, the transfer system is going to automatically shut off once again and then you are going to um, be burning fuel from the center tank again until you once again reach the predetermined value where it starts transferring fuel again from the aux tanks and like that the cycle basically continues until the aux tanks are empty so Operation of the auxiliary fuel system is actually quite easy in that you just keep the switches in the auto position and you don't need to do anything with them. Then you also have that aux fuel panel up here, the auxiliary fuel panel, and the bleed air switches you have up here provide an alternative mean for transferring fuel from the um, for transferring fuel in case the cabin pressurization is not working correctly. So if you're flying with the cabin unpressurized, then you will be using engine bleed air and that's what you select using those switches up there. So that's pretty much um, how the auxiliary fuel system works. So don't need to worry about that. Um, just keep the switches in auto and that's pretty much how you do it. If you're flying a Boeing business jet, then you could put the... Um, if you're flying a Boeing business jet, then you might have the additional auxiliary fuel panel down here and there is an alert light on there. When that alert light illuminates that is a sign to put the auxiliary fuel switches up here off. But apart from that you simply keep them in auto and then the system runs fully automatic. Oh, passing level 300, another pressurization check here. And that looks all good. Right, it starts getting a little bit dark. Let's put those lights on. Okay. Um, IPZ is the 900, the newest plane that was made by Boeing out of the PMDG options. Yes, the 900 ER is. I believe it did its first flight at some point around 2005 or 2006 or so. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but yeah, that makes it the newest out of the PMDG component. And Lukas Arman, did you answer my ATC question? Let me actually look up a little bit to find that question. I have a little in real life question. Is there a traffic control everywhere and everything at all times, like ground tower approach center, or is there something such as Unicom? Um, let's put it that way. There are a couple places in Central Africa where you don't have air traffic control. So over there you have something like Unicom. But apart from that, in real life, um, there is ATC everywhere. 
like all the positions that you see on the charts, they sometimes don't they sometimes combine positions in real life if there is not a lot of traffic. So for example at my home base we sometimes see that the ground controller also covers the um, delivery and during COVID even the tower controller covered delivery and ground all of them. But that is like really the exception. Um, apart from that yes of course there is ATC everywhere. Real life is not like Vatsum that you fly a lot on Unicom and just coordinate yourself. You have air traffic controllers. Okay, so reaching cruising level, we have 83 miles to the top of descent. And currently there is no ATC online in Istanbul, so we might have to do the arrival on Unicom. Um, Ron, are there any other reasons for starting the timers before takeoff except for tracking fuel burn? Well, the primary reason is actually not to track fuel burn, but there is two reasons why you start the timer before takeoff. The first one is, in case you have an engine failure, you can keep the engines at, mac at the um, takeoff thrust setting for a limit of 5 minutes. There is an option available from Boeing that you can do it for a time of 10 minutes. But that time, of course, has to be tracked. And after that time, you need to set a maximum continuous thrust on your engines. So that is one reason to uh, run the timer. The other reason is, as you said, um, tracking not only the fuel burn, but primarily monitoring the progress of the flight. So we're about to approach um, Kilo Foxtrot Kilo VOR. And... Um, we basically started the timer so that we can track the progress. So if we take out SimToolkit Pro once more and then search for Kilo Foxtrot Kilo down in the nav lock of the flight plan, we can see that we are scheduled to take 20 minutes to get there and we're supposed to have 3.5 tons of fuel. So, um, we should have taken 20 minutes to get there. We're currently 18 in the air and it's 12 past, so we take another minute, so we will actually take 19 minutes to get there. So that's like we are flying a little bit early, but that can be explained because we had the um, direct by the departure controller and we have been relieved of the speed restrictions. So that's primarily what we use the timer for. And then for actually checking the fuel, you don't really use the timer, but you compare the fuel that we have when we're flying overhead the VOR up here, which is currently 4.6 tons of fuel, and we are supposed to carry. 3.5 tons at this moment. Now we uplifted an extra ton of fuel, an extra 1.2 actually. So we are approximately, if we subtract 1.2 from this, then we end up at 3.4. So we would be more or less on the fuel that we have been scheduled to carry. I hope that answers your question. And then there is a second question from Lucas. Um, how do you enable that little box where you R and the terrain you used a little ago. I believe you mean the vertical situation display. So um, to enable that, first of all, it has to be enabled in the airline configuration setup of the livery that you are flying. And then if you are in the um, map display, you press the center button once, you get into the rows mode, and then you press it a second time, and that is going to bring up the vertical situation display. So be sure that this option is actually enabled in the livery in the uh, airline options in the livery and then you can just uh, use the center button up here. In the 737 MAX it's easier by the way, they added the button here in the middle for the vertical situation display. That makes life a lot easier and on the MAX the um, VSD is a lot nicer as well. And then, Sir Kelt Gaming, Emmanuel, as a pilot in real life, do you have a pilot YouTuber that you enjoy watching yourself? Not a flight sim, but another real pilot. Um, well, I like some of the content of Mentor Pilot. Then, Fly to Live, have you ever had an emergency in real life? No, I hadn't. Um, I had a couple of system failures just recently, um, I had an FMC failure again, but... 
happens. And the bear. Hi, Amy. Do you have the PMDG DC-6? Do you ever fly it? Uh, yes, I have it, and I fly it from time to time. Now, since the beta testing of the 737 started, I didn't get to do it a lot, but um, I have flew it almost around the world in real life. Uh, sorry, not in real life, I wish. Um, no, I flew it almost around the world. I still got to finish that tour, but um, it's going to be like 30 or 40 flight hours left. So I've got to find a time to do that. Turkish Clear Romeo Delta 1 to 2 decimal 8. Okay, silence. Finally, I can take that headset off. Um, app, review, app reviewer will. Does the 737-700 have a VSD? Honestly, 99% of the airlines operating the 737 have the VSD installed, regardless of the 737 that you're using. Robin, is your company using Jefferson or Lido? Well, for flight planning we use Lido, but for the charts we actually use NavBlue, which is the previous NavTech. Okay, so, 45 miles to run. Let's see, there is still no ATC online in Istanbul, so we are going to use Flight Radar 24 once again to determine the landing runway in use over there. So, Firefox, please. And then, let's see. One arrival, and that looks to be to 35 right, I suppose. Looks like that guy is going to 3-5 right. Do we have anybody who landed here? Yes. And he also went on to 3-5 right. Currently runway inspection in progress it seems. With a follow me on the runway down here. Yep, doing a runway inspection. But it's runway 3-5 right that they are using. Okay. Then we are going to plan for a landing on runway 3-5 right. So, first of all, let's get rid of the Antalya charts, don't need them anymore. Then, Istanbul arrivals. We're coming from SISP down here, and that leads us towards SADIC, and then let's see, runways. 3-5 right, that looks like it. ILS Zulu approach, that looks pretty straightforward, so that's what we're going to take. Then we need standard taxi routes as well. So arrivals, runway 35 right. That looks like what we'll need. Yeah. No, that is departure. Where's arrivals? Up here, arrival, runway 35 right. Okay. So that is what we need. And then finally a parking chart if we have it anywhere. That's it. Perfect. So final approach course is three five four. Frequency is 109 decimal 55 and 109.55. From there, this approach is simply straight ahead and we can tu tune UMVOR just as a backup. Alright, no NDBs needed, minimums, let's see. Cat 1 ILS 510.
Okay, latest weather. 040 at 21, so that's like 50 degrees off. 3 degrees, 1034. Runway 35 right, and that's gonna be a 96 mile ring, a 10 mile ring, and with that weather, we'll just make it a 5 mile ring so that we are configured a little bit earlier. 250 below 100, forecast page 1034 in here, and request the winds. Unable 280 knots at SISPI, okay, let's adjust the descent speed, 280 knots. That should fix that. Transition level. Let's see. IATC, transition altitude 12,000, so it's going to be 130. And you may load the weather, please. Thank you very much. So, then let's quickly review the approach procedure. For the arrival, SISP2 Alpha. Have it down here. Come on, Navigraph. Don't change my chart view all the time. So, um, approach briefing. Threats for the arrival, rather complicated taxi. We take it slow if we are unsure of the position, and that's gonna be it. We have 250 knots below 10,000. Forecast page filled in. Fixed rings, runway 35 right, 10 miles, 5 miles. And the arrival takes us from SISP at 280 knots below flight level 280. Fox Mike 620, Fox Mike 621 above flight level 210, Fox Mike 622 at 250 knots, then Fox Mike 623, Fox Mike 524 between 150 and 160, Fox Mike 525, Fox Mike 526, Fox Mike 530 at 230 knots and at 11,000 feet. Okay, and then we have this little point merge procedure up here taking us all the way to Fox Mike 534, still at 11,000 feet. And then we proceed via 535, 536 towards SADIC, and SADIC is at 220 knots between 5 and 7,000 feet. From there we join the ILS Zulu approach, runway 35 right, and uh, SADIC towards AFTED, AFTED mandatory at 5,000 feet, then OTSPEC mandatory at 4,000 feet, and GAP D at 205 knots, that's in, and get P also mandatory at 4,000 feet. And we've got a reset MCP altitude here, so let's already go ahead and start the descent. Flight level 210 initially to comply with that restriction. And down we go. Okay, so final approach fix at Frugo in 4,000 feet, 3 degree glide path down to the minimum of 510, which is set left and set right. And in case of a missed approach, we climb to 3,000 feet to Ladex and call 354, then turn left, Fox Mike 090 and hold. So in here we have Ladex 230 knots, Fox Mike 090, 3,000 feet. Perfect. And we can delete the engine outset. Perfect. So, we're going to use 800 kilos, which makes a landing weight of 67 tons. Quite a heavy airplane, the 900 ER. But Flaps 30 is going to do it nonetheless, because it is the last flight of the day. Auto brakes 3, that gets us off, hopefully, at, um, what that, at Charlie 8, and then we follow the blue line up here, somewhere to the terminal. Let's go ahead and, uh, check flight radar real, real quick to see where they parked on the, uh, real-life flight. If we can find that info. And we can actually find that info, very good. Okay, so don't need that anymore, but let's have a look at this. This is the uh, real Turkish 3 Romeo Delta from this morning. And as we can see, they landed on 3-5 right as well, just as we've planned. And then this is the taxi route they've taken, so we'll probably just do the same thing, imitating the real flight here. Unless any air traffic control comes online and gives us a different instruction, which could of course happen as well. Okay, so that's the descent preparation complete, then let's do the descent checklist, please. 
Pressurization, land out 300, anti is off, approach Britain fuel discussed, IS and altitude box, checked and set, descent checklist complete. Okay, so that's the approach preparation, and that's pretty much everything done that we needed to do. Ben, a um, couple questions over there from the chat. Um, Julian, how many years have you flown the 737? I'm in my fifth year right now on the 73, so I started flying it in 2018. Then, Sir Kells Gaming, how often in real life is it actually necessary to use auto landing? Well, a few times per year, like maybe three or four times a year we actually do an auto land because we have to. But I have to say as well that um, in real life when we, you know, in real life um, when we do an auto land, it's usually still cat one conditions, but the, Mostly it's the cloud ceiling that is uh, somewhere very close to the minimum. Officially, on a Category 1 ILS approach, you don't need any cloud ceiling at all. You can simply use the um, RVR to determine if you can land. But you know, if you're still stuck in that cloud very close to the minimum, there is always that little chance that you might have to fly a missed approach for that. And that is the reason why we often do auto lands in these conditions. If you have like overcast 300, with the minimum being at 200 feet or something like that. So, and taking that into account, as said, maybe three or four times a year we have to do an auto land, and uh, maybe one time a year due to actual low visibility conditions. I've had my last one in November when we've had a visibility of like 300 meters or something in Stansted. So, that was my last um, auto land that I've done. Of course, we do practice auto lands, like at least one every six months, in order to keep our low visibility um, currency. So that is something that uh, we also do. And taking that into account, you know, um, you may be doing like five auto lands or so a year. But of course, those practice autolands are done in Cat 1 or better conditions. Usually, you know, in capital K or whatever it is. And then, of course, there are conditions where you might have to do an autoland because the aircraft needs to do one. Now, conditions like those include, for example, if you had any kind of equipment failure that could... Um, that degraded the aircraft's autoland capabilities. Let's say, for example, if a navigation radio failed and the navigation radio had to be uh, replaced, or let's say our multimode receiver over here would fail, then a new unit would be installed in the aircraft, but that would degrade the aircraft from a CAT 3 certification down to CAT 1. And then, once the new unit is installed, in VMC conditions, you have to do a practice autoland. And um, when the airplane successfully auto lands, as in the main gear touches down within the um, touchdown zone carpet lighting system, then you can uh, upgrade the aircraft to a, to a category three status once again. That's like how it works. And um, that's also a reason to do auto lands. But then again, that happens maybe once or twice a year or something like that. So again, you see um, very reliable aircraft and of course, stuff like that happens every now and then, but you know, it's usually maybe once or twice a year that I have to do something like that. Okay, so let's go down to 11,000, set altimeter 1034, passing 21,900, descending 11,000, no flex, done by set. Now, I don't really want to fly this entire arrival. So why don't we quickly have a look into Flight Radar 24 to see what they are doing in real life at the moment. So, Flight Radar, let's go here. We have an aircraft that just landed, which is a Lufthansa. Then we have one coming from here as well. And look at that, they, they fly straight in. 
that Pegasus as well, even though he's going to Sapia Gaction, that Turkish as well, they're going straight in, all of them. So why don't we just about do the same then? Let's see once again, there is no air traffic control online in Istanbul, so if the real life guys go straight in, then we might do the same. Let's see. You know what? Direct to uh, Sadik. Execute. LNAV available. LNAV. VNAV. Little bit high, but that's not gonna be a problem. So, what's the new arrival time? 15.55. So, in 20 minutes. That looks about good enough for me to turn the seatbelts on. Then, Google TRX, flying for a job. Do you have any currency items that you actually have to intentionally try to keep track up on? IFR currency requirements would be easy day and night, passenger carrying currency too. Yeah, um, honestly, the only thing we need to keep track of really is those um, auto lands that you do one every six months in order to keep your uh, low visibility currency because um, you just don't do, do it that often as I just explained. Also, you need to do one monitored approach every uh, six months. And, of course, the airline takes care of all of that. So, um, you don't have to do anything there. If there is any currency problems coming up, then you're going to get an email from the airline and they are going to roster you accordingly that you can do something like that. So, you know, easy going. Even stuff like the medical, you know... Um, my airline starts spamming you with emails 60 days before your medical runs out, so um, that's really making your life easy, if you know what I mean. Then, Isaac is asking, hi, first time here. Well, first of all, welcome. Have you flown the MAX in real life? Yes, I did. Well, to be, to be fair, I just flew it for the very first time last week, but hey, I flew it. Hey, the sun is pretty much under, we don't need those sunshades anymore. Okay, now we've just got to keep an eye open on our RRT cars, because I do remember I saw somebody a little bit earlier in the approach who's been on the star as well. So since we took quite the shortcut here, we've just got to make sure that we don't run into him. And Julian, is the Max better to fly than the NG? Honestly, it is a little bit more sporty in the aileron, that was my first impression. And the displays are just really, really nice. So, uh, yeah, my first impression, I mean, I did a single flight on it as a uh, pilot flying now. And uh, my first impression, however, is that the Max actually is a little bit nicer to fly. Of course, that might just be this, um, wow, I've got something nice and new here. And Leandro, hi, how are you, Captain? Uh, greeting from Argentina. Well, greetings to Argentina. I'm good. You? Then, Christian, good evening. Do you know if there is a known bug with the IRS system with the 737? I always seem to get an IRS portion when I press the recall button. Um, there used to be one, but if you download the latest update, then that problem is going to be fixed. Wow, look at this. We're actually flying over icy lakes up here near Istanbul. How often do you see that? Like really, how often do you encounter something like this? 
in this area of the world. In my mind, Turkey is always 30 to 40 degrees, you know? And now we're flying here over a snowy and icy landscape. Okay, next altitude is gonna be 6000, as we can see on the nav display. Down here. Actually, 5000 that is. Hey Sehan, let me ask you about something different. PMDG, say, do you have any idea what the next product will be? Um, the next one is going to be a 777, but I cannot tell you which variant of the 777. So, yesterday on my live stream, I've had Robert Randazzo, he said that internally production is going well, but they're not willing to disclose which version it is going to be quite yet. Okay, so, remember, we passed an altitude constraint earlier, so we're actually on a geometric path descent segment over here. So as we approach the deceleration segment on the nav display, the airplane is not going to pitch up to reduce that um, airspeed. So we actually have to do that manually. But let's go in a level change and put it to 250 knots manually. And Julian, will PMDG make a max? Yes, they will. And Flynn, will PMDG eventually release all variants of the Triple Seven? Uh, we don't know. I would, I would be pretty positive to expect all the variants that we had in P3D. So the 200 ER, 200 LR, the Freighter, and the 300 ER. But if we are going to see any extra versions, whoever knows. And altimeters, passing 10,000 to 75,000, 10 tracks. Fuel, balanced, with four pumps on, lights on, angle of bank, 25, air condition and pressurization. 3.5, descending, set, fasten belts, on, recall, checked, and 1 to 1.5, deselected. 10 tracks complete. So we're getting nicely back under the profile and once we are close enough I'm just going to put VNAV back on. The thing approaching Istanbul is that they run parallel approaches on um, three different runways over here. So we've got to be careful to fly very precisely on the profile so that we don't interfere with the other aircraft approaching. Let me quickly show you this on the um, ground chart so that you can get an idea. Okay, so VNAV back on. So, we've got three parallel runways here in Istanbul and they can for sure use them independently of one another. So, at least the left runways and the right runway. And I believe they can use those four runways, more or less independent of one another as well, but correct me if I'm wrong on that. Might be that they do have some dependencies there. In any case, there are a couple approach altitude limitations published. If you look at the chart, like here, it's mandatory 5,000, mandatory 4,000, and to maintain that. Because they will have other aircraft coming in on the left side here as well, and those will probably be at a different altitude, 
so that you are separated by altitude from the other approaching aircraft. So we are going to abide those restrictions very carefully. Obviously with that we cannot do a continuous descent approach, but you know um, that's not going to be our priority and our focus over here. Our focus is actually going to be to fly the um, to fly the approach, you know, exactly as per the charts. And if they say they don't want CDAs over here, then well, they aren't going to get one as well. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a speed break here to get the speed back down to the 220 target. And engine on TI is on. Hi, Chai. Referring to the thermal anti ice indication on the upper display unit over here. Okay, drag required after gap D. That's not going to be a problem. So, we are receiving an ILS signal. Then, let's go ahead and do a frisk check. Frequencies 109.55, active nav 1, active nav 2, fixed rings, runway 35 right, 10 miles, 5 miles, idents. We have India Uniform Charlie Echo and India Uniform Charlie Echo. Temper instruments are set, courses 354, 354, and 354. Approach trackers, please. Altimeters and instruments, cross tracked, approach rates, tracked and set. Approach checklist complete. And now it's getting really dark. Okay, next up, descend to 4000 feet. We are within one mile of the waypoint, so we can put this down. 4000 set. So next up level in 4000, speed restriction 2, 5 knots at GAPTI, and for that we'll actually need the first flap setting, but we're going to do that when we reach the diesel point up here. Temperature's just around freezing, let's see if we've got any ice on the wings. Wing light on. No, the wings look clear. Yeah, they definitely look clear. We don't need wing anti-ice. Okay, Warlock armed. Okay, let's start slowing down. Speed intervent. Flaps 1. Speed checked. So, 205 knots. Mandatory, they said, in the chart. Localizer alive. Localizer capture. And we're heading 354. Approach armed. Go 
blijft lopen lagen. Oké, okay, let's take the speed back to something like 180 or so. That's five. Stop capture and missed approach altitude 3000 feet set. Istanbul traffic, Turkish 3 Romeo Delta, established 10 miles final, runway 358. Did somebody just say that he's going to run a one seven left? The wind is 030 at 20. Well, okay, if he wants to take off with 20 knots of tailwind, then he's welcome to do so. Okay, last time I approached Istanbul, the glide slope was actually a fair bit below the runway, so we're just mentally prepared for that, that we might have to apply a little bit of correction there. Okay, I'm just going to keep the NTIs on for this one. A little bit of moisture over here, it seems, in the air. Here down, flap 15. that wind we'll take a couple knots extra over here let's make that 154 so start switches auto recall check speed brake arm green light landing gear down three green auto brake three set flaps 30 30 and green light and landing lights on landing checks complete proceeded clear to left 1000 checked Istanbul traffic, Turkish 3 Romeo Delta, 3 miles final, runway 3 5 right. Okay, we're good on the poppies, two white, two red. Five hundred continue. Minimums. Correct. 
minimums. Continue. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. We break up. Thrust reverse normal. Idle reverse. 100 knots. Manual brakes. Auto brake disarm. Number traffic to Kishan or not to Juliet. Fast to runway 35 left. Okay, 60 knots past, we take the exit. Okay then, first to the right. Is it just me or is it really dark here at Istanbul? The lights are surely on, that's not the problem. I can hardly see anything here. Istanbul, Turkish Trirometer, Taran dedicated taxi into the parking stand. Okay, let's clean the airplane up. Yeah, let's actually get a little bit of light on the air. I'm gonna keep the landing lights on, we can see so little on here. I'm just gonna keep the landing lights on because this is not very bright. Okay then, as we briefed earlier on, we have our standard taxi routing that we are going to follow. But we are actually going to take it up here via November 4, I believe, the real one went. So the next is November 6, so we go two further. And then it's going to be November 4 and uh, Foxtrot 3, and we're parking down here today. Well, actually, November 3, not November 4. Anyway, we know where we are going. That's the important thing. So November 5, next left. We don't want to go there. And that's November 2 already, interesting. Should there not have been November 3 in between? Well, anyway, we'll take the next left. This is going to be a little bit of a taxi, guys, because I want to park at the same parking position where the real flight parked. And that was, unfortunately, on the very opposite side of the airport. And Istanbul Airport happens to be a little bit of a bigger one. And Ron is asking in the chat, um, when on Unicom, do the taxiways have a specific direction of use to avoid head collisions? Uh, no, they don't. Basically, on Unicom, you can do whatever you want. There is no VATS and rules in place that would govern how to taxi. Now, when there is a standard taxi system published, it is always a good idea to look at that. Like, we did that as well on the um, approach briefing. But then again, you know, um, I decided to go for the route that the real airplane took. 
And of course, if ATC went for non-standard um, taxi routing, then we would be taxiing non-standard as well now. But um, just have a good look outside. If you see anybody approaching, then uh, just make a call and communicate with the other people. That's really most important when you're flying on Unicom without air traffic control. It's all about talking to one another. Of course, in real life, there are standard taxi systems in place on uh, every airport, but pilots can impossibly know that. In some cases, there are taxi charts published, like here in Istanbul. In other cases, there aren't. So um, you'll just have to find something that really suits you. So, while we are still taxiing to the gate, Which is still going to take a little while, by the way. Uh, let's see. Unfortunately, there is no way how we could look at the landing report before that. At least not as far as I can see. Well, that's unfortunate, but then we'll have to wait until we're at the gate before I can show you my landing. So let's see, takes away Tango next, but we not, we need to go one further. We are going to take Foxtrot. So that's Tango. Over here. And then Foxtrot should be next. This is Foxtrot, so we go over here. Um, Cyclic Pilot, do you ever do single engine taxi in real life? Yes, pretty much on every flight. Um, Single engine taxi is the default taxi option that we always tend to use in the 737. Um, the reason we are not doing it in this live stream is that our gross weight is higher than 63 tons. So the way we do it in real life is single engine taxi is only allowed if your gross weight is less than 63 tons. Now with the 737-800 we usually are below that so I tend to say we do single engine taxi in 95% of the um, cases. Now, in the 737-900, however, your gross weight is usually going to be above that. And therefore, well, we can't do single engine taxi with this one right now. So let's pre-select the parking stand. All eleven right. That sounds good to me. We don't need a follow me vehicle. Thank you very much. Handling by Turkish Airlines. So we're going to enter the apron at Foxtrot Three which should be just behind the um, end of the terminal here. So the next to the right, basically. And there we can see it on the sign as well. Foxtrot 3 is coming up. Start the APU. Then we're looking for stand Golf 11 left. That should be somewhere down south over here. Let's see if we can see our ground crew anywhere. And it's a bit brighter here in the apron. We can put the landing lights off. I kept them on previously because it was just so incredibly dark. It is really about time that they implement ray tracing. 
in Microsoft Flight Simulator that would make the entire airports a lot brighter and in real life airports are typically much brighter at night than they are in Flight Simulator. Typically it's no problem seeing pretty much everything. Okay, I see Golf 11 over there and we're looking for Golf 11 left. APU is available and on the bus. So this is Golf 11 right. Actually they're waiting on 11 right, so let's go there. Maxi lights off. Seven three seven is on the guidance system. Very good, welcome to Istanbul. So we have two blue, one red, engine's dead. And then we have engines number one and two below 20%, anti-collision light off. And then we can almost do the checklist. Let's try to get our ground crew first. Okay, they actually have a jetway here. Very nice. Okay, well then, in the meantime, shutdown checklist. Fuel pumps, one on for the APU, electrical on APU, fast melts off, window it off, probe it auto, anti ice off, electric hydraulic pumps off, voice recorder auto, air compacts off, and engine bleeds on, APU bleed off, exterior light set, start switches auto, auto brakes off, speed brake down return, flaps up no light, parking brake set, start levers cut off, weather radar off, transponder 2000 standby, CBR circuit breaker in, cockpit door unlocked. And that is the checklist complete. Okay, so request that jetway power, please. And then you guys can prepare for the deboarding. Chocks are in place. Parking brake released. And you may start the deboarding. Okay. So, welcome to Istanbul Airport once again. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the flight with us. So, it's time to look at uh, Sim Toolkit then to figure out our landing. There is no hiding over there. And Christian, welcome as business class member on my channel. Okay, Sim Toolkit Pro. And that's it. We can already see 217 feet a minute over there, but let's get the full flight report. So, in Antalya, we have pretty much done a direct um, left turn towards Axon. That's what we've got by ATC. Then over here, we'd, we first flew the star, then we decided to go direct. And finally turned onto the final. We, we overflew Istanbul Atatürk Airport and some of you may have recognized that on the approach we actually heard an outer marker. So I'm pretty sure the outer marker we heard on the approach was the one from Atatürk Airport. And then from there we turned final onto Istanbul. And can we have that taxi? Yep. That's how we taxied all the way around. Okay then. Let's get, let's get to the part that I'm sure most of you are interested in. And there is no hiding. We've got to have a look at the landing report. Takes a little while to generate, as always. 
here we go. So, runway 35 right, we touch down. On the center line, just prior to the aiming point, at a rate of 217 feet a minute. So, what do we learn from this? Well, we could have flared the airplane a tiny bit stronger, but with the amount of crosswind we had, the moment I kicked the rudder to align the airplane with the runway, I really didn't want to do any uh, flare anymore. We can see a little rolling moment here of almost 2 degrees. That's entirely normal when you uh, come in with a flare, uh, with a crap angle. Of course you are in theory supposed to align the airplane with, with a runway centerline and you do your best to do that. But in reality if you flare a little bit too high, you know, if um, the landing isn't like 100% perfect, then you will just be that tiny bit off the centerline and then you um, will get a little rolling moment in order to keep the airplane on the runway. Um, Raphael is asking, or Rafael is asking, what app is that? Well, that is Sim Toolkit Pro. You can find the link to that in the description of the stream below. Well, so overall, what would I say then? After all, a good landing. A little bit in front of the um, aiming point, but nonetheless, there is nothing to complain about with that. So that is definitely a landing that uh, we could repeat on a line check as well. Okay, so that is going to be it today. I would like to uh, thank you very much for joining. Hope that you have enjoyed the flight with us. If you have any suggestions on any future 900 flight that you would like to see me do, then please do let me know in the comments below the video. And I would like to thank you very much for joining. Hope that you have enjoyed today and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one, hopefully very soon. Thank you very much, good evening and see you around.